go to a teacher. It's only going to get worse. Welcome to the Inland Sports Inland Show. Sports Show. Your leader in sports in the Inland Empire. In the Riverside. Now, here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Cora. Jeff, I have been in this game almost 20 years. I'm getting old. I've been in TV and radio for a long, long time. Today, the day after the Major League Baseball game, historically is the slowest sports day all year long. Today is the day. It is not the slowest. In fact, I texted you, I believe it was like 6 o'clock yeah, this morning. Yeah, why did you text me so early? Because eh, I was up. I don't with care the, about quite that much. I was asleep. I was up with the, the midgets uh, this morning. I got up super early, and I'm like, holy smokes. There's all kinds of salvos being shot across the bow. And I said, oh, we got some stuff to talk about because, like you said, it's the dog days of summer. Today's supposed to be the slowest the day slowest of the year. Of all, you pick any day of the year. Today is supposed to be the slowest sports it day is, in the entire year. It is not, and I'll tell you why. Do you know why it's not the slowest? It's not because of Kawhi. It's not because of Kawhi. It's not because of the trade for Manny Machado and his bad haircut and bad suit. No. Because today is National Hot Dog Day. It is? Yes, July 18th. So here's this is what I did. This is I had to share this. How with did you. you celebrate? Okay, now tell me if I'm crazy, and you know I might be, but uh the Wiener Schnitzel, you yeah. know those guys that sell hot dogs, they weren't prepared for what I was gonna oh. get, what I gave them. <laughs> Clean house. So it was I think they were like fifty cent hot dogs. So I went in with ten dollars and I said I want I want as many hot dogs as possible. You make a little kid. How much? How many can I get for this much? You know, he's giving me I, money. I want like eighteen hot dogs. So I had I had a big tray of hot dogs, Pep. I went inside. I said, "Do you have a Do you have an empty cup?" And he said, "Yeah." So I said, "Can you fill? I would like a cup of water, a big cup of water, and then I would like. Do you have any workers that aren't doing anything?" And they were like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." So I put three minutes on the clock, Pep. Uh oh. And I started. I took those hot dogs right out of the bun. I started dunking them in the water, and I went. Joey Chestnut on him. <laughs> I cleaned that place out in three minutes. So uh, are we in the works to be a competitive eater? Next, I, next I'm year? telling you what. I, New I didn't, Jersey? I didn't eat yesterday. I didn't put any condiments on it. No mustard. No no nothing. I just wanted to see if I could be in Joey Chestnut's world. So, so how many did you throw down in three minutes? About ten. Ten? Yeah, okay. I just ate them. And then I, but the thing is, Beginner. I left. I had, I had, I had, I had bun all over my face. Did you, you know? Like, it's just really. Did you kind of look like Slimer from uh, Ghostbusters? Oh the yeah. I, I dunked, I dunked my buns in just to get in as fast as I could, and I had the. There was a little dude, uh, Hector, do you, Hector. Little, Hector. Do you know why they do that? Why, why do they soak them in the? Well, I'm going to tell you because I am now a competitive eater. Okay. I you dunk it in there just because it 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 goes down easier down your throat, and you're not. You know, you're not you don't have bread in your mouth. It is just sopping. It's like it's like cereal. It's like a, a moist cereal. Mm. So I downed the, the buns and then I ate the dogs. Uh my little guy Hector, who's I think he was about fifteen years old. I had him uh write down the number. And I'll tell you, I finished it so fast. I didn't eat, I just left the place in a mess. I walked out and I said, I'm out and slammed. Like when you're done where people clapping when you walked out. I mean well, was there a slow the, clap the, or the, anything like that. The two homeless people that were on university came to the window and watched me and they looked like they were hungry. But I didn't give him anything. I just ate it myself. And I said, when I walked out, I said, National Hot Dog Day! And I threw it down and walked out. So that's what I did before I came here today, Pep. That's what you did. That's exactly what I did. So it was a sportsman day. There's nothing going on in the world. I think there might be a couple WNBA games. And there's the ESPYs where Danica Patrick, who's about the size of an action figure, is going to talk about sports. I don't care. Is she hosting it? She's hosting it. So they're going to, they're going to, somebody's going to carry, uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to carry her in his pocket. His uh, shirt sleeve pocket, walk down the red carpet, and they're going to do that. But I tell you what, National Hot Dog Day is the best day of the year, and I'm ready for Joey Chestnut, uh, July 4th, 2019. You got a whole year to build up to that. I'm ready. I'm ready, you, Pep. 10, you said you had 10 today? 10. So you got, like, what, 60-some-odd more hot dogs to go. But, you know, I, I'm still not full. I'm telling you, I could probably eat a, a, a cake or a pie. I could probably eat a few more hot dogs. I don't feel the, the residual effect. Of eating dogs, Pep, I feel phenomenal. You got the stomach of a billy goat. I do. I'm telling you. And we saw a billy goat yesterday. We saw a goat with two legs. You remember oh, yeah, that? That freaked me out. That looks still. I, I, yeah. I dreamt about that last night. A goat with two <laughs> legs. It was delicious. Delicious dipped you in butter. Dip in butter. <laughs> oh, everything I want to dip in butter right well, now. Well, Jeff, I would love to talk about your eating habits all day long, but we got to get to sports. It's supposed to be the slowest day. It turned into the biggest day right here in the Inland Empire and beyond. 
We went to bed last night thinking, man, what's Kawhi Leonard going to do? Is he even going to be traded? He'll probably be a spur next season, the way this is going. And it looked like Manny Machado was already a member of the Dodgers. Well, we wake up this morning. Kawhi Leonard is now a member of the San Antonio Spurs uh, in a trade to the Toronto Raptors. So he's now in Canada. And then we find out that Manny Machado might not be a Dodger. Not quite yet. It's not a done deal. There might be a snag. And who knows? The Brewers, the Phillies, somebody might be swooping into the last moment. So it's not a done deal. Until we see a press release from the Dodgers saying Manny Machado has come over in a trade from the Orioles, I'm not ready to believe it. But the Kawhi Leonard thing is a done deal. The Spurs, the Raptors, they both put out things saying that uh, the trade is over. So DeMar DeRozan goes to the Spurs. And the Spurs send Kawhi Leonard to the Toronto Raptors. It's a done deal. It's over. Well, you know, we said yesterday on the show, I, I said it would take place before next week's uh, USA Combine, their mini camp, before they go over to play in China uh, to kind of uh, Greg Popovich is, you know, is, is taking over Team USA. He's going to be the next Olympic coach. I thought it would be done before next week, but apparently it was done last night. And I do, I know we're going to talk about this later on in the show. I have an idea of what's going to happen with Kawhi Leonard, and I think it will happen sooner than later. The the entire I got an idea too, and I don't think we're on the same page. I don't think we are, but I I will say this: I think the situation is still fluid until we hear uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard actually speak out about something. I think the 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 situation is fluid, and I think a lot of changes will be made before weekends end. I think it's not fluid. Well, we, I think he's going to Toronto. We're never going to see see him again. You're crazy. He's going to stay there forever. He's no. going to sign a contract. He'll be a Raptor for life. I don't think so. There is no you guys way. Don't think so? Nope. nope. He's coming to LA next year. No. I have my theory, and I'm going to I'm going to break it down piece by piece just for you guys, and all right, the listeners. As you might have guessed, it's going to be a lot of Kawhi Leonard talk today. The pride of King High School, right here in the Riv. Hashtag the Riv raised me. We're also going to talk Manny Machado. We also got the Murray at a Mesa football team coming in studio because it is our pledge, the IE, that we talk high school football every single day right here on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. You can spoil yourself in your car every three or 5,000 miles. Get in there and get your oil t- change. Maybe some new wiper blades. They put the mint, the flour, the whole deal. At Spoiled, quick quality oil change off of Alessandro, right there off the 215 freeway. Get your oil changed at Spoiled. We love you, Spoiled. All right, we will get back to Kawhi and Manny Machado, but last night was the Major League Baseball All-Star game. Crazy, 10 home runs in the game and all. The ball was just leaving the yard last night in Washington, D.C. The American League won 8-6 to six in extra innings. And, Jeff, it was like the Dodgers beating the Astros all over again from the World Series as Ross Stripling was on the mound, all-star for the Dodgers, giving up back-to-back home runs to a pair of Astros, Alex Bergman and George Springer. Bregman went deep. Springer went deep. That was the difference in the game and the American League won. But my first thought was, man, this sure feels like the World Series again with the Dodgers getting rocked. I'll tell you what, how sad. We were talking about Ross Stripling. We were all excited that he was going to play in the All-Star game. I, you know, I was sitting there watching it last night with my kids. My kids loved it because, you know, in the 10th inning, it was in the ninth inning, it was home run city. And then you go to the 10th, it was back to back from the Houston Astros. And even my five year old said, holy smokes, dad, that guy's given up a lot of hits. And and the baby was going, yay. And, and Connor's going, holy cow, is that a Dodger? And I said, yes, it is not looking good. It was tough for, to watch that one. I hope it doesn't affect Ross Stripling as we go into the second half of the season because that could be an ego killer right there. Well, even in the ninth inning, remember the National League was down one, and my my daughters were sitting next to me, and they said, hey, when's this game going to be over? They had had some mermaid movie or something on Netflix they wanted to watch. I said, hold on. How often does Daddy get to sit here and watch some baseball? Let me see. I want to see how this pans out. So, of course, Scooter Jeanette hits a home run in the ninth inning. And I had to look at them and say, mermaid. I'm like, we're going to extra innings. They're like, what's that? And I'm like, it means we're, they're not over. It's The that game is the still – the, the mermaids are not coming on Netflix yet. Uh, we're still watching baseball. So, they were very upset. But then the Astros came up in the tenth inning and hit a couple bombs off Ross Stripling, and they felt a lot better because I said, hey, if these home runs stand up, you're going to get your mermaids in about 10, 15 minutes. So everything was okay. Did you see the skip? The skip's face uh, when Stripling was giving up those bombs. Yeah. Oh, he it looked like he was going, oh, my gosh. Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts did not oh look happy at all. I just think he felt bad for him more than anything because, man, it was such a great game. 
uh, it was 10 home runs. Uh, it was fun. Like that, that was, that was probably the best all-star game I've seen in a while. I liked the home runs. It was close. Basically everybody got in. Like it was a, it was a good all-star game. And, hey, and our guy, the best player in baseball, we say it all the time. Jacob DeGrom. No, no, no. Not? No, my BFF, Mike Trout. Mike oh. Trout got a shot. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's what, a two-time MVP of the All-Star Game last night was just showed how great he is. And I think the entire world is finally, finally starting to realize the gym we have here in Southern California. He's the best player on the planet. He's squeaky clean. Um, and he's actually, you know, very likable if you give him a chance. Here was his home run last night. Greg, let's go to the Inland Sports highlight machine. Mike Trout going deep in the All-Star game. Oh, that's gone. <laughs> now, was that Matt Kim? Did they have him? <laughs> that was, was off the quickest. Jacob DeGrom. Oh, my God. That, yeah, that was oh, the quickest gone. home run call in history. Smack, you hear oh. the, the, the smack of the back, the crack of the bat, and it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. Oh, man. So, and late, later on the show, we'll talk more Mike Trout of the Angels because the Angels actually came out today. They had to put out a press release, kind of coming to his defense because the commissioner of baseball, uh, Rob Manfred, came, you know, said that, you know, Mike Trout is a huge baseball star, but a lot of people don't know him yet because he doesn't market himself. So the Angels came out today, did a little damage control, saying, hey, Mike Trout, we love him just the way he is. He does not need to change. He doesn't need to chase money and endorsements. He doesn't need to market himself more. We like the way he handles his business. We love Mike Trout. And the Angels actually had to send something out today. So we'll they, talk about that later. Yes, they did. And uh, we have the actual statement, so we'll read some of it as well. All right, uh, man, it's it's a it's a tough day for Laker fans. I know everything's been so great. Oh, LeBron James. And all the new acquisitions. Like, it's been great in the purple and gold. Summer League has been wonderful. And it all came tumbling down. The whole offseason came apart last night as they lost to Portland in the Summer League Finals, 91-73. Does it really cast just a big shadow, a big cloud over the entire offseason losing in the Summer League Finals, Jeff? No, it it puts a shadow on everything. (laughs) I'm not even looking forward to the start of the year. It over, it over, this is over, I'm not overstating this. This is bigger than LeBron James signing with the Lakers. The Blazers defeating the Lakers by 18 for that elusive uh, Summer League title at UNLV. Because they were trying to go back-to-back, right? Didn't they win it last year? They had Kuzma last year. They had that ball kid. They were MVPs this year. This year we had second-year superstar. Hart was the MVP at 36 the night before. But the Lakers come up short. And I'll tell you what. The, the Lakers, Laker fans, Laker City, Laker Nation to be a little down today <laughs> after losing that title. We're joking, of course. Everyone's excited about LeBron. Summer League doesn't matter. I oh, walk, no. It I matters, walked to Rite Aid. They're oh. selling LeBron shirts. Everyone's scooping them up as soon as they put them on the rack. Is that where you found that shirt? Because uh, I saw the picture. Or it was Walgreens or it was, one of those CBS. It was in a drugstore? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were at like Target or one of those places. Say, hey, I, no. I told you to give me one. No. Double X. No, 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 no. It, it again. It's sweeping the nation. It's sweeping the IE. I'm just walking in to you know buy some hairspray, and there it is. LeBron James. Sure. <sighs> awesome. I love it. Can't they wait. couldn't even keep them in stock. People are just scooping them up right and left. They said, forget about that summer league championship game. We went LeBron shirts. Yeah. That's that's a true story. Yeah, I saw the picture. One great. other final Inland Sports Show note as we go through our headlines here in our opening segment. Local note. And this is a big one. I know there's some UC Riverside softball fans out there. I am. This press release came across late last night. And we know it's important because the press release was about a pitcher named Melanie Olmos. And she was right here in our very studio not too long ago. Melanie was a star pitcher at Grand Terrace High School. Hey, she was the she was the CIF Player of the Year, Pep. She was that good. She was that good. Legit. She was in our studio with Grand Terrace High School. They were awesome as Grand Terrace was building to. I mean, they were Division One status now because Grand Terrace is that good, one of the top programs in the IE and beyond. So she signed with Oklahoma, and she won a national championship with the Sooners. Well, guess what? She's transferring to UC Riverside. So she's going to be a Highlander. She's going to be playing right down the street from her house. I mean, Grand Terrace, really, I could probably throw a rock and hit Grand Terrace yeah, High School from here. I got you, a really good arm. Yeah, I was going to say, you really couldn't yeah, because 
I don't think you could throw a rock out of this building. With my left hand. Get out of yeah. town. Get out of here. So down. she lives really close. Now she's at UC Riverside. That's a huge pickup for Coach Palmer out there at UCR because, again, Melanie Olmos, former pitcher, Oklahoma, won a World Series, the national championship, and now she gets to come back home and pitch for the Highlanders. So a big acquisition there for UCR. And we're efforting to get Melanie on the show. It might be later today. It might be tomorrow. But we're going to try to get Melanie almost out of Grand Terrace High School on the show. We're brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods. More than 40 years in the IE with all your sporting gear needs. Of course, they can hook it up with your baseball bats, your mitts, maybe a soccer ball, some shin guards. you got to have shin guards. They won't let you play. Cleats, bright blue shoes, anything you want. And they can do letterman's jackets. They do the embroidery, the screen printing right there in the shop. So maybe you got the whole team. Maybe it's just your business, your company. They can do that too. We put our name on it. That's Ken Sporting Goods. Out there in Norco off the 15 freeway, KinSportingGoods.com. All right, we come back here on the Inland Sports Show. We're going to talk more about Kawhi Leonard going to the Toronto Raptors. His days with the Spurs are over. Of course, more Manny Machado and the Murrieta Mesa football team will be live in studio on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. I've studied the human mind. is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change. Uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for.
We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities. And if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for. Thank God, first of all, I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just, just for certain schools, and, and the, uh, the, fun, the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very, very good customers throughout the years and it's just been, it's just been a blast. Back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. Maria de Mesa football is going to join us live in studio right around the corner. We got more Manny Machado talk. It's still, as far as I've seen, not official with the Dodgers yet. Although all signs are pointing to Manny Machado going to be in Dodger blue, but it's not official quite yet. We're here and there could be a snag. I think it's just a formality. They're going to cross the T's, dot the I's, do all that stuff. And, uh, of course, more Kawhi. We're going to get to that right now on the Inland Sports Show, which is brought to you by Boost Performance Training in Corona with Coach Ray Bass. You know, BoostTrainingSystems.com is the website. Go check it out for yourself. They're doing a lot of cool things out there. If you're an athlete, whether youth sports, high school sports, college sports, they can help you out. And athletes of all different sports, lacrosse, golf, football, soccer, baseball. I know they do baseball. Go to Boost Performance Training. You'll be stronger. You'll be faster. You'll jump higher. You'll be the best player on your team. And it could change your life if you go to Boost Performance Training in Corona with Coach Ray Bass. All right, let's go back to Kawhi Leonard, Jeff. You have a theory. I have a theory. No, I have an answer. It's you have an answer? I have an answer. It's Wait. not a theory. It is an answer. Wait, hold on. Have you been exactly correct the whole time that we've been speculating about Kawhi Leonard? I was the first guy to say that he was definitely not going to play for the San really? Antonio Spurs. About I'm that. I'm going to dig up some of your tweets. Some of my tweets? You're like, Kawhi's definitely going to the Lakers. He still is going to go to the Lakers. He is? That is the answer I'm going to give you. All right, let's hear your answer. Okay, first of all. What's the question? The question is, where will... Where will Kawhi Leonard be in the next few months? Toronto. I'm going to say 
there's going to be a change very, very quickly, possibly before we even have a press conference. Wait, are you telling me? There's still a chance, Jerry. Still the, a chance. The Raptors made a trade for Kawhi Leonard with no intent to hold on to him. I think uh, this is my personal thought. You let me know. Listeners, let me know if I'm correct. Greg Popovich vehemently said, I am not going to ship him to a Western Conference team. True. I, Greg Popovich, am going to, if I'm going to get rid of him, I'm going to send him out east. True. Well, the San Antonio Spurs, Greg Popovich, the general manager and the owner, have now sent him out to the east. They sent him as far east almost as possible as you can get. In fact, they sent him the hell out of the country. Get the hell out of here, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Him. They deported him. He is he's he's right now he is a dreamer up in Canada. Right now he's trying to get back into the United States. Until we hear the words from Kawhi Leonard, I'm happy to be in Toronto. The situation is fluid. And this is my thought. If you are the Toronto Raptors and you know that if you talk to Kawhi Leonard and, you, and he tells you, hey, hey guys, I, I appreciate the, the the thought of you bringing me in to play for you guys, but guess what? My heart's not with you. My heart is really where it's nice and warm. It's not cold. I'm not going to watch Sacramento? the Maple Leafs. Sacramento is not the place, Pep. Uh, I don't want to hang out and watch the Maple Leafs. I want to watch uh, the Angels baseball, the Dodgers baseball, and I want to be Disneyland. A, I want to go to Disney. I want to hang out with my family on a regular basis. I can hang out with my uncle, who appears they seem to be uh, connected at the hip. I can be around him all the time. This is my thought, Pep. The Toronto Raptors got rid of a player that they didn't even have the faith to play in the final quarters of their playoff run. Demar Derozan, they get rid of him. They got the other guy, Potal. Is that his name? Yeah. The other like guy. That. So they send him to San Antonio, a much better situation for DeMar DeRozan and the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors then have Kawhi Leonard, and I honestly think that now Toronto can get more than Kawhi Leonard. I think they have a shot to get a couple good players, and those players happen to be Los Angeles Lakers. There are eight, no, no less than eight forwards on this Los Angeles Lakers roster. And I went through and I looked around at all the different rosters in the NBA of the teams that are contenders. Golden State, Houston, Philadelphia, Boston, Utah. Nobody has eight forwards on their roster. You can count nine if you uh, they list uh, LeBron James as a shooting guard. So that puts it at nine. You have an influx of forwards. Toronto could possibly get, think of this, you package uh, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma. You also package Lonzo Ball and uh, Lou Aldang's contract and a draft pick. You eliminate two forwards, brings you down to six. You eliminate that point guard that nobody wants with the Lakers anymore. Toronto gets young. They have two good forwards, and they have a point guard that can maybe start over in a different location outside of the country because we've seen the balls play outside the country and they do pretty well outside of the United States. The Toronto Raptors will get guys that will play there and the Lakers will get the guy that wants to play there as well. Who would not, if you're, if you are the Toronto Raptors, would you not pull the trigger on that deal? You are absolutely incorrect. Would you pull the trigger you if you were offered those three players, a boatload of money that well, will take money off your cap next let me, season. Let me go down the rabbit hole with you. Okay. Even though I completely disagree with you. Okay. I think you're I think you're absolutely wrong. I think most people are just assuming that Kawhi is going to go to Toronto for a season. And then next season when he's a free agent, he'll sign with the Lakers. And the Lakers will get what they want without having to give away their young players. But I'll go down the rabbit hole with you for real, real quick. Because it was about two weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, when Las Vegas all of a sudden said the odds to get Kawhi Leonard, remember Toronto was number one. They came from out of nowhere. I remember. And the and Raptors I agree. went to number one. It was like, what does Las Vegas know that nobody else knows? Because all of a sudden the Raptors are the favorite to get Kawhi Leonard. Let me ask you this, Jeff, because I know you love a good conspiracy theory. And so I do. do I. I do. Do you think 
the Toronto Raptors brass front office and Magic Johnson had conversations behind the scenes saying, hey, if you can get Kawhi Leonard to Toronto, look at our roster. What, who would you want of ours to make another trade? Oh, you want Lonzo Ball? Then we better go out and get Rajon Rondo. Oh, you're going to want Brandon Ingram? Oh, we better back that up with JaVale McGee and Lance Stevenson. Are you are you saying that the Lakers knew what was going to happen and that's why they kind of stockpiled all these guys? Yes. And the reason being, <laughs> yes. Bingo. Bingo. And that's the reason being. That I was still my next think point. That's, I still think that's incorrect, my next but I'm point, following okay, you for I'm a second. That, no, my I'll next that, point, my nonsense. next point on that cuz I knew you were going to go there. I knew you were going to go there. Oh, I knew exactly that you were going to go there. Here's the here's the the theory behind that the entire conspiracy theory is. Look at the players that they just brought in. JaVale McGee, uh, was it uh, Rajon Rondo, Lance Stevenson. and Lance Stevenson? Guess guess what they did about those? Guess what's good about those players? They're all one years, one year deals, Pep. So you know what? We're gonna take this year. If you can get Kawhi Leonard, that's great. You can get you can have our young core. That's great. We're gonna have we're gonna have uh, LeBron James, and we're gonna have Kawhi Leonard, and hey, we're still gonna have Josh Hart. We're gonna have guys that are, that are good pieces. But guess what? When you bring in LeBron James, you bring in Kawhi Leonard, and there's there's a lot of uh, cap space next year for the Lakers to sign guys. Guys are going to come because they're going to see it's opportunity because NBA players are opportunists, Pep. One-year deals, they leave. A lot of money comes off the books. The Lakers can start filling in the pieces. To go, hey, Clay Thompson's going to be available. They're going to have a max contract. Even if they get uh, Kawhi Leonard this season, this weekend, this week, if they get him, they will still have another max deal next summer. And they're going to have even more because they're on one-year deals. Listen, we got an interview with Greg Popovich we're going to play in just a second. But let me ask you, what do you think happens first? That Kawhi Leonard pops up at a press conference for the Raptors as they introduce him? Or we hear Kawhi Leonard going to the Lakers in another trade? I think we hear Kawhi Leonard going to the Lakers in another trade. And I honestly believe that this was a, a, a done deal. It helped. It, it saves space. Look at what it does for San Antonio. It you you saves might space. be the only guy saying this right now. So if it comes true, we'll give you okay. all the credit. I think Greg Popovich, and I, he's not the, the shot caller. They have a great GM in, in San Antonio. R.C. Buford. R.C. Buford is the guy calling the shots. A lot of people are saying it's Coach Popovich. Coach Popovich is the coach. But they have a great GM. This will save face for San Antonio because they didn't ship him to the Lakers. They did what they were supposed. They shipped him as far. They shipped him out of the country. They got a All Star in Demar Derozan. They have young pieces already in place. They've got rid of the. the they've cut the fat with Tony Parker. They're going to cut the fat with Manu Ginobili. They have uh, Aldridge is still there. Pau Gasol can be a contributor off the bench. They're still going to be a playoff team, and that's really all you want. They save face. The Toronto Raptors also save face because uh, they know that Kawhi Leonard's not going to play there beyond this year. But they know if they get these young players that the Lakers desperately want to get rid of to get Kawhi Leonard, they are bet they, everybody wins. Every single team wins in this situation. The Toronto Raptors get two very good forwards and maybe a good point guard. We have yet to see about Lonzo Ball, and we see the Lakers get the guy that they've wanted for, since the day he knew that he was not going to play in San Antonio. We have a hard time remembering what we talk about on shows. Let's remember that on National Hot Dog Day. You came out with your theory on Kawhi Leonard's getting to the Lakers soon, like a trade with Toronto soon. This could be the nitrates in my head from the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, but hot dogs I honestly, I honestly don't think that we will ever see a press conference in uh, Toronto with Kawhi Leonard and the brass of, of the Toronto Raptors. I think we will say hear a uh, a press conference saying that we are trading Kawhi Leonard. I think he plays almost all of the season in Toronto depending how the season's going if the Raptors are going downhill because what they had the best record in the East and they fire their head coach they get rid of their franchise guy in DeRozan I'm not sure what's going on up there but let's assume they're doing okay maybe they hold on to them go all in the East is up for grabs although Boston's going to be really really good and so is Philadelphia but if things go sour maybe they try to hold on to them right before the trade deadline and make a bidding war out of it who wants Kawhi Leonard on this 
you know, the final couple months of the season to help a team win an NBA title. Uh, you know, that sounds great, but what if Kawhi Leonard says the entire time, I want to be a Laker, I want to be a Laker. I don't care who, who he, they trade him for. The, he would be the Manny Machado. You, you bring him in for a couple months, You help. he helps you win the title, and then adios. Yeah, but, but Toronto isn't going to get as nearly as much as they would right now prior to the season. They won't. They won't. Because they're going to go, ah, you know, we might be able to. Who's going to take Kawhi? What if, what if Kawhi plays like the first four, five, six months of the NBA season and he's awesome? All, back to like the second best player on, in the world. And he should. He's had a year off. He hasn't done anything in a bidding year. Bidding war, man. You know how much you can get in return? Yeah, a bidding war to who? They, he goes to the Clippers? Oh, boy. The Clippers. No, a team, a team that's in the hunt for the title. You would have to give up the world just to get him. You're If you're in the hunt for a title, those guys that are players are going to be gone in that trade. This has to be done prior to the season. GMs aren't going to look at it and go, hey, you know what? We're right now in the title hunt. We're going to give up uh, our, our starting two uh, power forwards for Kawhi Leonard or our shooting guard. No way it's going to happen. It will be done sooner than later. It happens all the time. Yeah, we'll see. Let's say it's let's say it's Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia he's not going to Philadelphia. Second in the East behind Boston. They feel if they can pick off Boston, they got a real chance. They bring in Kawhi Leonard for a couple months. They win the title. Everything is good. They, then Kawhi can go sign with the Lakers and move on with his life. Yeah, but see, the thing is, just like we talked about Manny Machado coming to the Dodgers, somebody's going to be the odd man out if the Dodgers win the World Series because you want to keep that team intact. If Kawhi Leonard goes to Philadelphia, they're going to want to keep that team intact. They want to have a dynasty with that young core guys. But if Kawhi Leonard says, ah, I still want to go to the Lakers, they get nothing for him. You're right. It's like, how much are you willing to give up to make a run for the title right here, right now. Well, you know this, what I mean? Like it's, yeah. you go all in this year because you're you're knowing if, if you make a trade for Kawhi Leonard, there's no sure thing that you're gonna get anything in return. So you gotta win it all. This might be the first time in NBA or major professional sports history that the player is dictating exactly where he wants to go. It is not no, a No, the Spurs did. No. The Spurs were in Kawhi control Leonard the whole time. is still in the driver's seat. Kawhi Leonard, until he says uh, uh, any word, if he says hello. That's still more than what we heard. <laughs> and he won't. He won't say anything. But if he does, if he comes out and says, I want to be a Laker, then it becomes the player-driven league. Wow. And that could cause many problems for years in the future. Could cause major, major uh, waves in the NBA. All right. Well, we know that Kawhi Leonard will not be talking anytime soon, right? Unless, unless they have a press conference to introduce him. But it's already being reported all over social media that he wants nothing to do with the Toronto Raptors. The problem is... Um, it's not really his choice. Now he's he's traded. He's he's a member of the Raptors. Um, now if Toronto's got to gauge whether can they get him to get on board and, and play this season, or are you Team Jeff and you think, yes. hey, T- Kawhi doesn't want to be in Toronto. He's not going to stay in Toronto. He doesn't even want to be a rental. He wants to end up with the Lakers. So Kawhi's not talking, but Greg Popovich is. Greg Popovich, the head coach of the San Antonio Spurs, just did an interview with the media this afternoon. Let's play about a minute of this. Here's Coach Pop. I uh, conducted himself wonderfully while he was here. You know, he helped us uh, win a fifth championship. Uh, as I said, he was a hard worker uh, all the time. And uh, we, we wish him well. But at this point, you know, it's time to move on. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about... Uh, Jakob and Damar and our basketball team and putting that together. We've got a lot of young kids uh, and it's exciting. Uh, but in no way, shape, or form does it do any good to go back in time and talk about A, B, or C. Uh, it's time to move on. What's been the hardest part about all of this for you? Uh, you know, trades and cuts are always the worst. You know, when you have camps every year and you got to look guys in the eye and say, well, we're going to let you go. Uh, that's always tough. And trades are tough. You know, I talked to Kawhi on the phone. I talked to Danny on the phone. Uh, those are personal relationships that you have with people. And that's always, always difficult. It's the, probably the toughest part of our profession. All right, that's Greg Popovich, the head coach of the San Antonio Spurs, talking about Kawhi moments ago. It's all over in San Antonio as Kawhi Leonard is a member of the Toronto Raptors. For now, hey, remember the uh, Toronto Raptors got a pretty good guard. They got Danny Green. Danny Green could be a good. <laughs> he's the forgotten guy. In this, yeah, right? he is. But he's he's a really good player. And if you combine him with those two forwards from Los Angeles and maybe uh, Lonzo Ball, he hey, about? that's a pretty good team right there. I put them in the playoffs <laughs> in the East because the East is rotten.
When we come back, the latest on Manny Machado. Is, is he in the Dodgers lineup yet? Like, what is going on with Manny Machado? The latest when we come back on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. How you guys doing? Coach Bass here with Boost Training. We're here at the BPC and it's summertime. We have another Boost Training tip for you. This tip goes out to all the football players. You spent the entire offseason getting strong, putting on weight, getting bigger. Now it's time to make that sport specific and turn it into power. So these next few tips are gonna show you exactly how to do that. Let's check it out. Okay, so our first tip of the day is what's called a depth jump. And this is a great drill to turn strength into power that you wanna hit as you start getting closer to season for an off-season football player. So, what Cruz is gonna do, he's gonna take a quick step off the box, he's gonna hit the ground as quickly as possible, get up, elevate, and he's gonna land on that, the higher set of boxes here. All right, he's gonna have his hips flexed, arms extended, he's gonna hold that for a second, he's gonna step back down. Here we go, Cruz, let's hit it. Get up. Nice, he wants to hold that position for a second, take a nice and easy step down. Depth jump, great drill to maximize power. There you have it. Now we just showed you guys a depth jump. Now, one of the things that you can do to progress that and really take it to the next level, you can either elevate the 18 inch box here, all right, or we can elevate the landing box, all right? And remember, the goal here is to minimize ground contact and have a great counter movement, meaning when we hit the ground, we wanna bring our arms through, all right? So just one of the things that you can do to make this more difficult and to maximize all those power gains. So that's our Boost Training Tip of the Day. Thanks for checking us out again. And make sure you stay up to date with everything that's Boost. Check our schedules, check our videos at our website at www.boosttrainingsystems.com. Check out our Twitter at Boost underscore training and our Instagram at Boost Training. Grind hard, stay solid. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. any sales on them we do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service vacuum and cleaned your windshield for you as well everything's looking pretty good you come into us one time believe me we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time
going to be created here. Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. I did, Jeff. I went down the rabbit hole with you because you're like my brother. But I, I completely disagree. But I went down there with you just to go along, just to support you. Yeah, whatever. So I should not order my Kawhi Leonard Toronto Raptors jersey, right? Is that what you're telling <laughs> no, me? No, I'm saying go ahead and, and do it. I shouldn't order it? Hey, now, what's the rule on this? If you're over 40, and we're bo- all of us are in here over 40, would you ever wear a jersey? With a guy's name on it, other than Fernandez or Gorham or or Holla or a, I want a Holla jersey. <laughs> I, I, I I did a couple of weeks. Well, it wasn't a jersey. It was a, a t-shirt. Daryl Strawberry. But that's okay. It's a t-shirt. But okay. if you're if you're wearing a grown man's jersey and you're over forty, unless your name is actually on the back, don't ever do it. I ever. wore a. I'll, I'll be honest. I wore a Ryan Matthews Chargers jersey to a Chargers game because I liked him. You look like yeah, a Matthews. You look like your, your name could be Ryan Matthews. I know. We actually kind of look the same. You do. We're built the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but I felt weird at the game wearing his jersey, probably because I'm a 49er fan, which I shouldn't be wearing a Chargers jersey anyway, but I was a fan of Ryan Matthews. But I felt kind of weird going to what you said. I, I was a, I'm a grown man wearing a Ryan Matthews jersey. It just felt kind of weird. Is it weird that I kind of want to get a LeBron James jersey and put it in my garage? Or is that, garage? That be, yeah, my garage. I have a man cave. You gotta wear it out. If you're gonna have one, wear no, it out. I can't wear a LeBron James, big fat old guy with bald head walking around with LeBron. We saw LeBron James. We saw <laughs> Yeah, we, we both big left. big guys with bald heads on a LeBron James jersey. We saw him at the Inland Empire 66. Yeah, he game. almost got killed. Do you remember that? He almost he was smoking a a, a, a heater by the exit and a, a foul oh, ball. A foul ball. Almost not I almost I, I said right LeBron on the top James almost got hit in the head. <laughs> yeah, LeBron James. He was wearing some black Nikes. We saw him at the 66ers game. Yeah, he almost got it cl- plunked. But, yeah, don't ever wear a jersey, Pep, ever. All right. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Yidland Sports Show is brought to you by Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temesco Canyon Road. You can buy, you can trade, and you can finance. And best of all, you can save lots of money. If you go to Catalano Motors and mention the Inland Sports Show, $500 off. Just like that. It's a sweet, sweet deal. You're already going to save thousands because they got specials every single week. And if you mention the Inland Sports Show, 500 bucks off at Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temesco Canyon Road. CatalanoCars.com is the website. we got a couple good minutes here to talk about the Dodgers. Manny Machado, the deal has not happened yet. We don't know exactly who's even the proposed trade. There could be a Rancho Cucamonga quake or two in there. We, we just don't know. I do not. I'm going to be on the record. I do not want this trade, not because he has a bad haircut and wears horrible suits, but I think they are getting rid of somebody who I think could help the Dodgers in the future. And that, is it Yusniel Diaz? Yusniel Diaz, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The guy hit two home runs in a Futures game. He did. And he the Futures game are like the, the rising major league stars you know, uh, before before they get to the bigs. I want you to think about this. He has only played in 258 minor league baseball games. This year alone, he is batting 324. He only has 39 strikeouts. He's got 41 RBIs. He's got six home runs. He's got six triples. He is a Dud, why get rid of that guy when he is this guy should be playing for uh uh the guy the guy that Puig. He should be taking Puig's spot. Right fielder. 
He's a heck of a he's a stud, only 21 years old out of uh, Havana, Cuba. Why is he not being brought up, and why is he being traded for a guy who's going to be here two and a half months? Well, I don't know. Maybe you should ask a team trying to do the same, same thing for Kawhi. Outside of the Lakers and maybe the Clippers. Oh, touche. Right? Oh, touche. Right? Oh, Bring touche. him in as a rental. Outside, if you're, if you you're better like, win it if you're bringing him in. I figured out the Dodgers, though. I stayed up late last night after uh, I was weed whacking my backyard, and then I, I gave myself a haircut, and I figured out the Dodgers, Jeff. It, it looks good, by the way. looks really good. Assuming they get Manny Machado, I figured them out. Yeah, he's going. So here's the Dodgers lineup, in my humble estimate. If they get Manny Machado, and we are assuming that they will figure out a way, your catcher is going to be Yasmani Grandal. The first baseman, see, now, see, this is where it gets weird because the Dodgers have so many versatile guys. There, there's a lot of interchangeable parts here. But I keep Cody Bellinger at first. I put Max Muncy at second base. I put your boy JT at third, and Manny Machado would be your shortstop. Here is your outfield. You've got to keep Chris Taylor in center field. You've got to keep the all-star Matt Kemp in right. Jock Peterson would be my starting left fielder, but he could platoon with Puig when he gets healthy, depending on, on the pitcher. You got to have the pitching matchup if it's a righty or a lefty. I think Puig and Peterson platoon in left. Chris Taylor's your everyday center fielder. Matt Kemp's your everyday right fielder. And that leaves you with Kike Hernandez really as a versatile guy. You want to give Machado a break at short? You want to give Muncie a break at, at uh, you know second base? You want to put Kike in left field or right field for Kemp? He's very versatile. You have Kike Hernandez come off the bench and play anywhere where a guy might need a uh, you know, a quick breather, a day off. But I think that's how the lineup looks. And right now, I would say that Yasiel Puig, of all the guys, looks to be like the odd man out in the whole situation. Well, you remember, there's the, the biggest contention that the Dodgers are going to have right now, and I, I kind of looked at their, their, uh, their salary cap issues. They have $2.9 million to spend. Uh, but they're going to be $6 million in the hole when they bring in uh, Machado this year, which means that they're probably going to have to get rid of another $6 million around that ballpark, which could mean, could mean, possibly. Uh, I looked at the guys. Grandal makes $6 million. Yasiel Puig makes less than that, and he's in an arbitration year next year, which would fill that gap. One of these Dodgers that you had just mentioned, and possibly – uh, Yasiel Puig could be that one guy that could go in this trade. That might be what's holding it up. It people are saying it could be, you know, it's a minor league guy, an injury. I don't know if that would hold up. You would just, if it's a minor league player, you would just move on to find another guy in that rotate or in the deal. But we could see Yasiel Puig or Yasmani Grandal go as well. It's just crazy. I think we've gotten to the point where Puig is expendable. Yes, I think agree. There, I think there's a surplus of outfielders. I would not give get rid of Taylor. I, you know, he's not an all star, but he's a gritty player. He can play a lot of different positions. You got to keep Taylor around. Matt Kemp's having an all star season, uh, a resurgence. You can't get rid of him. Jock Peterson, Jock Peterson and Puig are kind of like the same guy to me, but on different sides of the plate. You know, one's a righty, one's a lefty. They're kind of like the same guy to me. But I would get rid of Puig's for the simple fact that we see all the kind of bonehead things he does on the field. Just cut your ties with him. You've given him more than enough time to show himself to be like an all-star, one of the best players in baseball. He hasn't taken it. He hasn't taken the opportunity to establish himself as that guy. I would get rid of him. And if you get rid of Yasmani Grandal, which I don't think they will, but that only opens the door for our guy Austin Barnes to be behind the plate, the Riverside Poly Bear, which I would totally be on board for. But I think, and I don't know if there's going to be any major leaguers involved in the Manny Machado trade, but I I would think if there was, the first guys that would be part of the trade would be Yasiel Puig and maybe Logan Forsythe because Forsythe, Forsythe hasn't really done anything. He's well, expendable. Well, how about Corey Seager? That's the one question we're going to have here. We're going to talk about for the rest of the season. Remember, he's only making, what do you think his salary is? Corey Seager? Yes. Is he still on his like rookie deal? Like yes, four million. No, five hundred and seventy-five thousand. Is it really? That is all he's making right now. Corey Seager's making because a half he, a million dollars. It goes dollars. up each yes. year, right? But he is making oh, just a just over a half a million dollars a year. He could be part of this deal. He could be the guy that they're questioning whether or not to take in this. You know, somebody said it's holding up by the medical records. This could be the guy. It's crazy. It is. 
All right, we'll keep an eye on Manny Machado if anything happens. We got Murray at a Mesa football coming up here on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports, i.e. 1350 AM. I played uh, once upon a time at Centennial High School. I was actually on the uh, first ever CIM championship team uh, back in 2000, and then uh, my senior year, we won it again. I'd say that's my passion because I've done it. You know, um, I know exactly where these athletes are at. I know what their mindset is right now. I know how hard it is to, number one, find a, a, a performance coach who can take you to the next level. What sets us apart has to be, you know, how we work with our athletes and what we know. We can take an athlete and get and, you know, help them reach their athletic potential, you know, help them, you know, prevent injuries, help get them stronger. I know every single athlete steps into this gym. I know exactly where they're at and I'm gonna progress them every week. If you're not getting results, then you know, really what's it about? We're gonna deliver something that's measurable, you know, in terms of speed, power, you know, strength, agility.
Hernandez and Jeff Corum. Welcome back to your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM, live and amplified every single day from 3 to 6 p.m. Nobody else is doing this. The only local show weekdays right here in the IE. And we're brought to you by Spoiled. Quick quality oil change. You can spoil yourself and your car. In fact, look up in your windshield. You see that little sticker. In fact, you're overdue right now for an oil change. Get in there. Spoiled. Quick quality oil change off of Alessandro Boulevard on the 215 freeway between Riverside and Moreno Valley. Now, we made a pledge right here on the Inland Sports Show that we are going to talk high school football every single day. That's our pledge to you, the Inland Empire, because we love you so much. Today, we are talking Murrieta Mesa. I think Coach Turner brought the whole team in. He brought some big dudes. I, I'm going to assume some skill position players over here, but we got some big guys here, some grown men in the studio today. We're fired up about it with the Murrieta Mesa Rams. Join us live on the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. Is it possible to squeeze in Coach Turner over here real quick? I want to start with the big dog over here. Coach Turner, man. So I, we will talk about this season because I'm excited about what's coming uh, you know, up for you guys. But really going back to last year, really bursting onto the scene, coming out, out of a very tough Southwestern League. We all know that, all the good schools down there. But you guys were a semifinalist last year in the CIF Southern Section Playoffs in D5. I mean, what kind of clicked last year on this Murrieta Mesa team? Well, you know, the, the first thing that we had was, it was year two. We had a bunch of kids that, you know, wanted to stick together, you know, from the Little Rams uh, youth teams that, that we have. You know, Marietta, Marietta is a very, very competitive just city itself. You got Vista Marietta, you got Marietta Valley, and you had a bunch of kids that didn't want to pick any one of those schools. They wanted to change uh, the culture. So they came in, they said, you know what, we want to wear green. We want to be one of the athletes to change the culture of the city and try, you know, to be the best. You know, we already have... Vista Marietta and their tradition. You have Marietta Valley, who's been the last two years league champs. And now we're starting to get kids to come in and not just be a part of what's already there, but, you know, to come in and change the, the culture of the city. You've had some dudes go through the program. Kai Thompson was a fantastic running back. Um, who are some of the guys that we're going to be talking about this season coming back for your team? Well, it's great, you know, because, like, like you said, last year we, we had a whole bunch of kids, you know, leave. And we're not looking at, at, at a point of, you know, saying that we're rebuilding, we want to reload. You know, we want to just stick kids right right into the, the mix. You know, I, I think our, our defense is going to be hopefully the stable, you know, where we're at. I know we got Keon Bars um, that's coming back. You know, we have um, uh, uh, Nathan Arlano. You know, he's, he's coming back, you know, our offensive line. We have a all-CIF um, defensive end that we're probably going to move over linebacker. Um, Colin Layton, you know, he's going to be awesome this year. Chad Ortega, you know, he's coming back, you know, uh, the, the corner spot. Um, another guy, you know, uh, Morris, you know, he's going to be playing receiver, you know, coming in. Our, our, our quarterbacks are fighting, you know, for real good spots. Also, um, looking at, you know, the guy, you got Sua Venegas. He's an addition, you know, coming in. Uh, he came in late, you know, uh, last year, uh, moved in. So, you know, we, we got a pretty good core. You know, we got a guy, uh, Antonio January, all the way from uh, Illinois, you know, that, that's come in. So, we're excited about this group of guys. See, that's the trick, right? You can have a great season. But how do you keep it going, right? You don't want to be that flash in the pan. Like, hey, I remember when Murray and Mesa had that one good season. Now it's trying to build that consistency, right? That's what a program is when you know year in, year out, the Rams are going to be there, right? And that's the trick. And that's the one thing, you know, that I'm stressing to just our, 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 our team. You know, we don't want to be a one-trick pony and say, hey, you know, when Jeff and those guys, because those guys did great. They came, like you said, Kai Thompson, Jeff Miller, you know, Capone Blue, and Geo Sanders. You know, how do you replace that kid right there? Um, but – just with the kids, it's like, hey, you know what? We don't want to be known as that one team that came in and played. Again, our league is very, very tough. You got teams coming in, and in order for us to be known who we are, we got to keep the consistency. All right, let's, let me start with some of the big guys down here on the end. And they are very big. If you're watching us live and Amplified right now on our Inland Sports channel, got some of the big guys in here for the Murrieta Mesa Rams. Nathan Orellano, Keon Bars. Um, guys, Going back even to last season, Coach dropped your names here. Going back to last season and the success you had at Marietta Mesa, how do you keep that going? How do you get back to the CIF playoffs? I think you're, what, Division Three now? I mean, from Division Five to Division Three. 
I mean, we're talking about some serious competition. You play in the Southwestern League. So what's the key? I'll start with Nathan over here. What's the key to keep this going at Marietta Mesa? You know, it's just like going back to last year, uh, being a returner, a returning varsity player, we're just trying to continue the same thing that we started on last year. Last year wasn't the finish of what we wanted to do. Last year we had a good season. We're just looking to build off of that. So being a, a varsity returner, we want to keep the same energy, keep the same thing going that we had going on last year, make it even farther this year. And Keon, to piggyback off what, what Nathan just said, you know, a, as a returning player, it's it's important for you guys to maybe like set the tone in practice. You know, I know as we get closer to the season, you'll have game week. So those younger guys know what the culture is going to feel like at Marietta Mesa, right? I mean, you got to have to set the tempo for everybody else. No, yeah, a lot of the younger guys know what's going on and how far we got last year, but we're not finished, so we're not happy with what we did last year. But we just need to keep working harder. Now, you guys, I mean, tough schedule. Obviously, Southwestern League play. You got some real good ones coming up in non-league play as well. Uh, Ethan Venegas here, number four. Ethan, man, um, so this team, going back to last year, it was – I think you played Cajon, right? It was Cajon in the semifinals in Division Five, yes, But it was a fantastic season. You know, going into this year, does it feel differently? Like, does it feel like, man, I think Marietta Mesa is, you know, like a sleeping giant. Like, we're doing good things. Like, we're ready to really burst onto the scene and show everybody else. I mean, we saw you make it to the semis last year. But, I mean, you guys have something going here. I mean, do you feel that same way? Does it feel different this year going into, into the season? To be honest, uh, yeah, it does. But... The thing is that uh, us returning and everybody else coming in, the, the new culture that we have, it's everything's gonna change. Everything's gonna change this year. We're gonna we're gonna be one of the most toughest teams. And that's why that's why I best believe that's gonna happen this year. Everything's gonna change. We also have Colin Layton. He brought the gun show for everybody. Uh, so everyone to enjoy here on the Inland Sports Show. Thank you, Colin. Um, how much time do you guys spend in the weight room? Because you got you got to be strong, right? Yeah, um, we spend a tremendous amount of time in the weight room working on our. Uh, physical strength and just to prepare for everyone that we play and you know a lot of times we weren't the biggest teams out there but we weren't ever being pushed around by anyone coach turner i, I feel like colin's one of those guys you'll probably put anywhere on the field right you know what i mean like you're saying like you're gonna move them around and you know sw maybe switch positions colin where do you feel comfortable at or does it even matter to you, you just want to be out there uh as long as i'm making plays on the defense it doesn't really matter to me i mean sophomore year i played dia and a little bit of the interior line too uh, last year, I played DN and some middle linebackers. So this year, as long as, you know, our defense is putting out, it doesn't really matter to me. I just want to be able to make plays. All right, let me get uh, Chad Ortega up here, the deuce. Chad, uh, you're looking around at the guys that we have here in the studio, how optimistic are you for this Rams team this upcoming season? You must feel pretty good about this group. Yeah, uh, I feel pretty good about this group. I have, I have, uh, I have confidence in my whole team. I feel like... Like, our brotherhood is very good. I feel like we're coming together as a unit, and I feel like we're going to do great things this year. It's overall. All right, uh, Andrew Morris up here. Is Andrew the – is he the quarterback? No. The kicker? <laughs> no. No, he's the receiver. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Andrew. Um, he's got some guns, too. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Coach has everybody in the weight room, right? Uh Andrew, man, when we look at this uh, the Southwestern League schedule, every single Friday night is a battle in the Southwestern League. But you guys aren't intimidated. How do you keep your your mind right? Like, hey, we deserve to be here. We're going to compete every single Friday night. Well, we uh, we focus on ourselves more than the other team. We uh, we study their their film, make sure we know what they're going to be doing. And so, as long as we know what we're doing as a team as a whole, then we believe we could be anybody, no matter who it is. Now, we're, we're stuck in the month of July right now, right before football, but every single day it's January for our next guy, right? Oh. Yeah! You like that? <laughs> Antonio January here. Uh, that little shark tooth, or what is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, he, is he the cool guy, the style guy on, on the team? No, I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio, let me ask you. So, the first game uh, is August 25th. That's a Saturday night, right, against Etiwanda. Yes, so that's week one. So you have week zero and then week one. So you guys, the sec technically the second week of the season, you guys will get it cracking against Etiwanda on a Saturday night. How anxious are you out there to, you know, just to get out there and start flying around with your guys? No, I'm for sure ready. I know my guys are ready. I, I'm hoping Etiwanda's ready. Like, they better be. <laughs> <laughs> I know our team's really excited to play, and we're supposed to have a really big show out, so we're all really excited to see that happening. Let me bring Coach Turner back in here. And Coach, something that Antonio just mentioned, and something I want to you know circle back to is the fact that you know we cover Southwestern League football, and the fans down in that part of the county 
are insane. You can pick any of the schools, and they've got these huge crowds. What's it like playing at Murray at a Mesa? And do you feel like more and more people are like, yeah, we're all about Rams football. They're winning now. They're good, and we're excited about it. You know, um, that that's one thing where you look at the Southwestern League, and that's just a plus to all the schools out there in the Valley. You know, um, Bishop Marietta has their um, – BBC, where you go in and, and the line's already big before the game even starts and teams that come in, you know, they're intimidated. Uh, when we come over there and play, our kids aren't intimidated because uh, the Mesa Beast, you know, they're they're also doing the same thing. You know, you go all the way down to, you know, Great Oak High School and that red wave, oh, man. And it's just... It makes it fun, though, right? You like does. You rise to the occasion. You like that environment. And I'm telling you, just the students, they find something bigger than just the game of football. They go with their friends. And it's always just a competition between uh, MV and Chaparral, uh, Temecula Valley, you know, and, and MV. So just the atmosphere, just, be, you know, not even the football game, just the pageantry of the bands, the uh, the kids coming in, the shouting. It's just great. You know, it gives you that Texas feel a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like that old school, small town football. No you know, like Friday night, the town closes down. Everyone goes to the football game. Yes. Everybody's there, right? Everyone used to play on the football team. The old guys come back. You know what I mean? It kind of almost feels like that, even though you guys are still a, a relatively young school. So, And speaking about that relatively long school, you know, this is our 10th year. So I know right now we're pushing a big campaign. It's our, it's our 10th year coming out. We're going to have a birthday bash. Our first game is going to be free. You know, to uh, uh, Etiwanda fans and our, and, our, and our whole city, you know, we're going to have vendors coming out. Uh, I know starting at 2 o'clock, it's going to be a big three-on-three basketball tournament, volleyball tournament, you know, bring the kids out. It's going to be a lot of f- uh, free food, stuff like that, parking's free. So we want to have everybody come out and really, as a school and a community, say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be that third school. You know, we're still the youngster, um, you know, in the league and especially in, in, in the city. You know, uh, we have a lot, a lot to prove. The one thing that I will say is we're trying to make sure we breed that confidence. You know, him coming up saying, you know, hey, they better be ready, then good. I'm, I'm glad our kids are feeling that way. So now we got something, you know, to go out there and play for. And we got to back it up. So 10 years coming in, we're not the little brother anymore. You look at our track team last year, state champs. That's right. Not not just Division One state champ, but the state champs of California, you know. And again, we finished third in our league. Our track team finished third in the league because Great Oak and Vista Merida are, are two dominant teams. Yes, you're right. Yeah. First in, you know, Division II uh, CIF champs, but then state champs. So our kids are starting to believe it. Our school's starting to grow up. Um, our admin is believing it. Our teachers are, you know, doing a great job. Our education, you know, Mesa's known as the academic school. You know, when uh, they, they say, hey, you know, where do you want to go for, you know, sports? Everybody says Vista or in Merida Valley. But they say, hey, you know, if you want to go in for grades, oh, you got to go to Merida Mesa. So now I'm excited to have both of that. You can have it all, right? Have it all. So that's just a, 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 a testimony to the teachers and the community. Come out and become a Ram. You know, we're doing good things over there. Can you guys hold out a little bit? We're going to go to commercial break. We'll come back. We'll talk more Murray and Mesa football. Is that cool with you guys? That's great. All that's right. Nice. When we come back, more Rams football here on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. <laughs> I played uh, once upon a time at Centennial High School. I was actually on the uh, first ever CIF championship team uh, back in 2000, and then uh, my senior year, we won it again. I think that's my passion because I've done it. You know, um, I know exactly where these athletes are at. I know what their mindset is right now. I know how hard it is to, number one, find a, a, a performance coach who can take you to the next level. What sets us apart has to be, you know, how we work with our athletes and what we know. We can take an athlete and get and, you know, help them reach their athletic potential, you know, help them, you know, prevent injuries, help get them stronger. I know every single athlete steps into this gym. I know exactly where they're at 
and I'm gonna progress them every week. If you're not getting results, then you know, really what's it about? We're gonna deliver something that's measurable, you know, in terms of speed, power, you know, strength, agility. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. beds in the bunk beds yes why are you guys so sweaty all right we've already figured out how to do this the beds match up perfectly and here's the thing it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities please say yes you don't need permission from us to build bunk beds you're adults
We're back to the Inland Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. It's like a club in here. Something like we got the music. These guys are dancing. We got the yes. Murray and Mesa football yes. team in the house. We're brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods. More than 40 years in the Inland Empire providing you with all of your sporting gear needs. And, of course, they can do Letterman jackets. They do the embroidery, the screen printing right there in-house so they can hook it all the way up for your team or your business or your company. That's Ken Sporting Goods off the 15 freeway in Norco. We love you, Ken. Ken Sporting Goods. Dot com. Again, listen, it's our pledge to you, the IE. We love you so much. We're talking high school football every single show. I get tired of talking about LeBron. I got to be honest. I could talk about Kawhi, Manny Machado, but it's all about high school football. We got the Rams in the house from Murray at a Mesa today. So who's the guy in the studio that's the first one like on Snapchat or posting something to Instagram that you hear? This guy right here, Ethan, my guy Ethan. Yes. What'd you post? I'm just curious. What'd you post on social media? Oh, I was just on live right now. Oh, like, you were? I have my friends on live. Like, we're on live still. What are they saying? Did they say, good job, Ethan? You sound really good. Or what'd they say? I just got a lot of people just watching. That's it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Good job, go Rams. I feel like all of Murrieta is probably listening or watching right now. Yeah, you watch still, live on YouTube, my right? Snap, my Snapchat's still blowing up about it, too. Oh, it's still blowing up? No. Oh. <laughs> I posted on Twitter. So you post on, I saw that, too. I appreciate that, helping us get the word out. I do appreciate that. So appreciate you. let's talk about next season because it's a, it's around the corner. You guys don't have a week zero. You have a week one. That's a Saturday night. I'm sure all of Marietta is going to come out and see that one against Etiwanda. Plus, it's free. Yes, Coach sir. said free food. That's magic ticket right there. And, in fact, um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I We're targeting. I've already contacted the CIF. We're targeting to do that game like a live online radio broadcast of Etiwanda yes, and Marietta Mesa. So you might see us on Saturday yeah, night down you. there. All right, so the cat's out of the bag there, so we got to follow through now and get that done. All right, so big season coming up. It all starts with Etiwanda in week one. That's a Saturday night, August 25th. After that, let's go through your non-league real quick. You open up with Etiwanda at Corona versus San Jacinto, on the road at La Quinta, and then back home against Redlands. That's a pretty good non-league schedule. Nathan, let me go to you first. Are you excited to see what this team's going to be all about? Because once you get through non-league, you'll, you'll know what you guys have in the cupboard right before you even get to Southwestern League play. Yeah, you know, it's going to be, we have a good non-league schedule. It's going to be tough, but I think we're ready for it. We had a good schedule last year non-league, and we had a 5-0 and record going through that. So it's all, it's all about getting ready for league, getting our team better, getting ready for the playoffs, and uh, that's just what we're all about. Keon, what do you think you guys have to maybe clean up, do better, improve upon before you see Etiwanda in that first game? Um, I mean... We have a little, like we have a lot of stuff going on, but like not much to work on. Just like getting our mindset right for Edwanda, but our mindset's there at the same time. But our team's ready for Edwanda. Now the season starts so early. Are you? When does school start for you guys? August August fifteenth. Okay, so like school starts, and you guys have like a good week week, week yeah. or two before your first uh, official game of the season. Um, Ethan, how's Snapchat going? Is it still blowing up over there? My Snapchat's still live. All right. Yeah. All right. What are what's what's it like though down in in that part of the county for Murrieta Mesa football? I mean, like, do you walk around like if you uh, not that you'd wear your jersey around town, <laughs> but if you have something, let's say a polo shirt, a t-shirt, a hat that says Murrieta Mesa football, like, is it is the, is, is there a buzz? Does it feel different right now? People are talking about it. Yes, exactly. Uh, there really is. Like, I'll go anywhere in California. And I'll even go back home to Arizona. There's still people that there's actually people that know about Mary to Mesa. And that's the thing that I'm really like happy about because like we like all like all of our guys worked hard. And so like we're getting out there and as like everybody said, especially Coach Turner, like the culture is changing. And so it's time to make a new way like a new wave, a new culture now. Yeah, you know, Murray and Mesa's had a little bit of success, but I feel like you guys are turning a corner right now. There's so much talent down. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. There's so much talent down in that part of the county, in Riverside County, that I feel like, you know, the time is now for, for Murray and Mesa. Uh, Colin, let me ask you, so good response on the gun show? Like, people, are people hitting you up saying, yeah, yeah, the gun show? Uh, yeah, my girlfriend texts me out. She's like, hell yeah, you got the gun show. <laughs> so I see most of you guys have the sleeves down, but Colin comes in, like, just banging through the front door, like, hey, yeah, what's I mean, up, guys? The jersey would rip, by the way. <laughs> Colin, what do you think will be the 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 strengths of this year's Murray at a Mesa team? When you look at the guys coming back, there's probably some young guys that are going to pop up and be like, hey, he's pretty good. But when you look at your team, what do you think the strengths will be this year for Murray at a Mesa? Um, honestly, I feel like our front seven is like maybe the best it's ever been. I feel like our D-line with Keon and Ari and we have some new guys coming in. And 
I feel like it's just a good linebacker core, and I feel like all around our defense is going to be really good. And especially with our young guys, our young guys are so talented. They just haven't had the chance to hit the field yet. Like, January is going to blow up. Morris already had a great sophomore year, so I think it'll be an all-around good year for us. Let me go to Morris next over here. He's standing by. So we, you got Etiwanda August 25th. Obviously, you know, we talked to Keon about getting better and, and improving and whatnot. Individually, Andrew, what do you think that you can do to be ready for that first game? I mean, maybe something that coach preaches, you know, day in and day out in practice. I don't know if it's like, you know, stay focused, get your mind right, you know, never take a playoff. I mean, what are some of the things that you're working on? Yeah, definitely speed. Coach is really big on speed, 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 do everything fast. And personally, yeah, just make my routes crisp, do everything the way I'm supposed to do it, and do it 100% every time. I should be ready. All right, let me get Chad Ortega behind the mic as well. I want to give everybody a little mic time here as we're talking Murray at Mesa Rams football here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Chad, how, did, how does this group feel this year compared to maybe last year's team? Is it different at all? I mean, obviously there's going to be some new guys. The quarterback's gone. The running back's, you know, the, the, the marquee back. You know, you have a new one this year. How does this year's team feel maybe a little bit different or unique, I should say, from last year's team? Yeah. Um, we're, we're missing a lot of seniors. Like, they all left. But I feel like we're like we have all conf like confidence. We're all coming together. Like we all believe in one of, like in each other. And like we're Marietta Mesa. Like it, it carries weight now. I mean, base if you, when you have success, that carries weight. Uh, let me get January back up to the mic. I'm not even gonna call him Antonio anymore. It's just gonna be January over here. That's fine. Did you just call him January? <laughs> I don't got a first name anymore. When's your birthday? Was it in January? No, it's October. Oh, it's October. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. All right. Anto Antonio January here on the Inland Sports Show. Antonio, let me ask you. Um, so you've got Etiwanda that first week. We've talked about the entire non-league schedule. Now you guys are Division Three. I mean, you had so much success last year that you got bumped up all the way to Division Three. Um, I've looked at those teams in that playoff division. Those are some big boys out there. Are you excited about rising to the opportunity, playing some really good schools, assuming you guys make the playoffs, which I'm assuming you guys will? Yes, of course. I'm extremely ready. I know they're ready, too. Uh, we're really looking to see Cajon again. Like, I really want payback on them. I'm really excited to they're see They're really them again. good again. <laughs> well, we're really But you're good ready. Again. Yeah, you're yeah, really good, good, too, too, though, right? Yes. yes. All right, let me get Coach Turner behind the mic again because um, 9-4 and four last season, semifinalist in Division 5. We talked about that Cajon team you ran into. They were really good last year. Very good team. Very good. Now you're in Division 3. We talked about your non-league schedule as well. You feel like now, uh, I know probably the non-league schedule was already in place going into this season, but, I mean, now that you guys are winning, you're having success, as you look down the road and the, and the program continues to build, do you feel like, you know what, maybe we'll challenge ourselves with some Division ones or some Division twos. I mean, you see Division one and two schools in your own league with Mr. Marietta and Marietta Valley. Do you feel like this is a, this is a program, this is, a, this is a team that's, you know, taking those necessary steps to, you know, hang with some of those premier programs that we talk about all the time in the IE and Southern California. Definitely. You know, the, the, the number one thing that I, I really love and know where we're at, our coaching staff, you know, th we're going into year three. You got Coach Kute, you know, right when we came in the room, you had uh, his old basketball coach came in and said, hey, man, Coach Kute is there. So, yeah, he's our offensive coordinator. He's like, you know, the, the staple of where we're at, mm -hmm. you know, with our, with our offense. Um, coach Allen, our defensive coordinator, you know, again, this is going into year three. And just as a whole, we're building. You know, when we first got there, I know uh, my first year, our freshman team, we had about 28 kids, you know, to show them to play football. And uh, Coach Lieutenant Colonel Jackson on campus did a real good job of coaching that team. Um, the next year we had Coach Donald Hutchinson, and we had about 38, you know, 40 kids, you know, there. And he ended up going 8-2 and two with our freshman team. So, again, you're starting to see the kids starting to you know, grow. This year we have 76 freshmen, you know, uh, in the program. So, as you can that's see. That's good numbers. That's real good numbers. You know, um, kids are, you know, deciding, you know, hey, you know, I want to be a Ram. So, eventually, you know, I, I, I've seen records where the Rams have gone 5-0 and in the preseason and get to Southwestern League and go 0-5. Again, uh, I know that the, the Trinity League, you know, with uh, Bosco and those guys is one of the probably the best conference in the country. Yeah. Um, I know Centennial and the Big Eight, you know, where those guys are, you know, uh, with the, their teams are pretty competitive. But you look at the Southwestern League, we had five out of six teams make it to the playoffs. Don't sleep on the Southwestern League. Five out of six. And, again, you know, Vista Marietta has a, a great tradition. But, you know, talk about Marietta Valley. You know, yeah. They're the back-to-back -back league champs. So, you know, we got confidence. You know, we're going into, you know, our, our preseason. 
But we know that when we get ready for that Battle of Southwestern, you better bring your lunch every single week. I know uh, last year, you know, we came in and we kind of slept on Chaparral. You know, they were having, they were struggling a little bit. We came in and I know the big thing we were talking about was, man, if we win this game, we're playing for a league championship to Myriad Valley next week. Chaparral came and slapped us. And we're like, whoa. Wake so, up call, right? Wake up call. So that's the real thing that I love about, you know, our league, our kids. You know, they know each other. They talk, mess with each other on Snapchat and all that stuff. And at the end, they go out and have fun, you know, and, and, and hang out. So, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, when football starts, we know that our league is very competitive and you better be ready to play. And I think, that, you know, of course, you guys kind of beat each other up because it's such a high level of football in the Southwestern League. But you got to think once you get to the playoffs, you can look your guys in the eye and, and say, you know what? You've seen teams like this before. No you played Vista Marietta and Marietta Valley and Great Oak and Chaparral and Temecula Valley. You've played them. So whatever you see in the playoffs, you've already seen that level. You know what I mean? It's not going to catch you by surprise. You've seen that level of football. We have, you know, and, and going into that Cajon game again, the, the, that was the first time ago in this school history we've played or practiced, you know, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And that was, you know, the first uh, marquee because, you know, in, in, in high school football, that's your goal. That's the benchmark. If you're practicing the week of Thanksgiving, your season's a success, right? Yes. And then, you know, we saw Cajon, and they played Marietta Valley, and, you know, you saw them on tape, and, and they did, you know, very well. But our kids were confident. And we stepped into that semi-championship game, and, whoa, before we blinked, it was 28 nothing, And they just, you know, like a machine. And it's like, wow, you know, but our kids. Well, you're not the only ones. They did that to you know, a lot of people, yeah. But, but just getting the experience of being there. So now we know that we can get there, you know, get back and – I hope we're doing it this year for Thanksgiving because that's the CF championship game. That's right, because this season's moved up a week, huh? It sure has. So, you know, um, number one thing is confidence. Our kids got to go in confident, knowing that we can beat anybody who who we see, and that's just the first step. Well, guys, I'm so happy you came up in studio. You fought the traffic. You got here. Uh, you know, it's our honor and privilege to talk about Maria de Mesa football. Again, we love IE football, so, you know, we're going to be following you all season long, and hopefully we're going to see you that first Saturday night. Was it free parking? Free, free parking, free, free free admission, free food, um, bring the kids out. We're going to have a lot of, you know, jumpers and things, you know, go out there. And we're just, you know, mainly saying thank you. Our principal, our athletic director, John Bassard, um, Marriott has been very, very good to us. Our police department, fire department, just the, the, the small businesses that are out there, and just the people as a whole. You know, it, it, it's a it's a very good school district. You know, I'm going to tote our horn, you know, all three schools, um, plus our um are doing a real good job. You know, all kids are having fun. So, again, we want to say thank you to come back, you know, to the city of Marietta. It's a great place down there and a high level of football right there in the city of Marietta. Uh, guys, thanks for coming in studio. I appreciate it. Man, all of you guys, the big guys, the little guys, all the guys. Thank you. That, 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 thank that's you, me. That's not all me, the little guys. The little guys. <laughs> yeah, Coach Turner, the little guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Again, uh, their season opener coming up on August 25th against Etiwanda. That's a Saturday night, and it's absolutely free. When we come back, guess what we're going to talk about? You guys want to guess? Kawhi Leonard or LeBron James? Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James. See, you got that. it. I'm that's all that. we Go talk LeBron. about. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back at your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 13. 50 a.m.
times as I get to cover the Riverside TV and Pep at IEMG. We will have all of the high school games covered from start to finish the entire football year we will have for you. Yeah, plus, Jeff, we're going to do a lot of live uh, online radio games this season. And I kind of let the cat out of the bag. I wasn't expecting to. But Marietta Mesa against Etiwanda is our first game. I already got clearance from the CIF. We're going to do that one down there at Marietta Mesa. And as you heard, everything's free. The tickets are free. The food is free. The parking is free. The, you can listen to the game for free. Everything's free down there. So uh, we're excited about the Marietta Mesa Rams. Uh, Coach Turner's awesome. Brought in a great group of kids. And uh, I think we have another big year. The Southwestern League is going to be fun to watch because Coach Peterson now at Vista Marietta, you know he's going to have them going back in the right direction. Um, we got Bert Esposito at Temecula Valley. Robbie Robinson at Great Oak. If you look around, there's some great coaching in the Southwestern League. Coach Wilson and Murray at a Valley. They got Hank Bachmeyer back. You know they're going to be in the mix. Coach Raymer at Chaparral. You know, and, and Coach brought up a good point. I don't know if you heard this part, Jeff, but he said, you know, that the Trinity League is widely regarded as the toughest high school football league probably in the country. Yes. And I don't think anyone's going to argue against nope. it. I mean, even guys in the Big 8 League, the Southwestern League, all these ever, other places, they'll be like, yeah, you're probably right. And it is. But the Southwestern League from top to bottom, it's brutal. All those teams are really good. And, and now Temecula Valley, who's kind of been at the bottom for a while with Bert Esposito on the scene, I think they're ready to turn things around too. It's only going to get tougher. Well, you know, you and I, we've seen more high school football than I, I would say anybody. Would you, would you agree? I mean, we're, we're at game after game. We've, All the we time. watch film. We go to every passing league tournament. We are, we are boots on the ground. I will say this about Miriam, Marietta Mesa football before we go on to the next thing. Last year, nobody was talking about Marietta Mesa prior to the season. I know the coaches were excited. I know they, they knew exactly what they had coming into the cupboard, heading into play. But they really came out of nowhere. If uh, if you're a football mind in, in the Riverside County, San Bernardino County, they really shocked and surprised everyone right out of the gate. And I think... And another thing that Coach Turner brought up, I think the fact that they've had Murray at a Mesa teams that had a little bit of success. Like, remember, they would go like four and one or five and zero oh in non league. Yes. People would be like, okay, maybe this is the year that Murray at a Mesa is really going to make a dent in the Southwestern League. Then they get the league play and they'd go like 0 oh and five or one and four. But now they they went two and three last year. They're picking off a couple of league teams now. They went to the semifinals in, in Division Five last year. You can see the progress. Like they're no longer like the new school around. They're they're making progress. They're a force now. Well, yeah, we talk about that Southwestern League, and there's always been a couple teams that have stood out better than everybody. Well, now well, Vista set the bar, yeah, Vista right? Has Vista set, Maria to set the bar. But we're starting to see guys that are going to different schools. I mean, you look at Marietta Mason, not just in football, but basketball. They've been successful. They won a state title in track. I mean, this year. They, yeah. And their facilities are top notch. Their football stadium is cool. It's like in a bowl. I don't know if you've been there, but it's yes, I it's, have. it's an incredible facility. They their basketball facility. They have two full gyms. Uh, it's one of those. It's a hidden gem in that Marietta area. That if you had never been there, you're never gonna find it. But people are finding Marietta Mesa High, High School. I cannot wait for those in town rivalry games when Marietta Mesa plays Marietta Valley. Because Marietta Valley is awesome. They still got Hank Bachmeyer. They're Division Bachmeyer. One. Vista Marietta, you, you got to feel like they're going to get back on track. They're going to right the ship with Coach Peterson. Those in-town games with Vista Marietta, Marietta Valley, and Marietta Mesa are going to be awesome. You can guarantee the place is going to be packed. It's going to be sold out. The, the fan bases are rowdy and fun. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited about this year in the Southwestern League. All right, now let's go to – wait, who's saying that? Okay, I guess ESPN just put out that Manny Machado, it's a done deal. Yeah, it was Is that a done right? deal about 10 minutes ago, actually, it came out. Manny Machado, the details are not released, but that is a done deal. He's got his picture taken in a Dodger uniform. The specifics will be announced later on this evening. Oh, so it will happen by the end of the night? They, like. He's already assigned, but they will, they're will. they going to explain who is involved in the deal, who goes Because I'm where. very curious. Okay, so Manny Machado is going to the Dodgers. I think we all kind of assumed that. But what are the pieces the Dodgers had to give up to get him? That's what I'm curious. Is it anyone in the big league level? Is it any minor leaguers that we might recognize who are hot prospects that came up with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, no names yet have been have been mentioned. Uh, but, yes, it will be 
the prospects will so, be named later uh, on this evening. So maybe no bone. I'm surprised that maybe they didn't try to squeeze Yasiel Puig into this deal. Uh, that's just me. Again, we love we love conspiracy theories here. We think outside the box on the Inland Sports Show. I thought maybe Yasiel Puig would be a guy they could squeeze because, again, they have a surplus of outfielders. He would put butts in the seats for the Baltimore Orioles because they're basically the worst or second to worst team in baseball right now. I thought maybe they'd sneak him in there, but it sounds like, again, we we haven't seen the official uh, announcement, but it sounds like it's going to be all minor leaguers. Well, the Dodgers did uh, put out a statement saying that the the deals were done without ripping apart their farm system. Like, so, what does that mean? <laughs> let us be the judge. <laughs> which means, you know, they're, what they're saying basically is, uh, you know, none of the tro- prospects that were traded away have made a major impact at the major league level. Alex Verdugo is that outfielder who has star power written all over him, and he got a taste of the big leagues. He was the name that I was hoping they're going to keep off the list, and it sounds like they did. Yasniel uh, Diaz was the guy who was kind of headlining, I guess, this trade for the Dodgers. Um, so we'll see if he was uh, still in this package with Manny Machado. So as soon as we get those details, we'll pass it along to you as well. We're brought to you by Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temescal Canyon Road. You can buy, you can trade, you can finance. They can help you out. They make it so easy when you're looking for that car or truck or SUV or sports car. They got it all at Catalano Motors. And when you mention the Inland Sports Show, you get $500 off. Man, we're putting money back in your pocket. You could go nuts. You could have a huge pizza party if you wanted to with 500 extra bucks. But you got to mention the Inland Sports Show. You got to go to Catalano Motors to get that sweet deal. Catalano Cars. Dot com with 500 extra bucks you know what i would do right now what would you do probably go home buy a bunch of like uh chicken wire on my ponderosa yeah kind of rope off an area all right there little plant joe a bunch of zucchini maybe buy a couple rabbits because i live on the farm do you like that much zucchini yeah. i use zucchini uh, and cucumbers and cute i love cucumbers you do if i had 500 extra dollars i'd buy some chicken wire Two bunnies and a bunch of cucumber plants. Well, we have cucumbers right now growing in the Gorham uh, backyard. We have a little stand-up, a little uh, planters. Do you love cucumbers? No, I don't like cucumbers. I like them as pickles. That's about it. Really? Yeah, cucumbers make you burp and fart. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. You know, if you eat radishes. That might just be you, Jim. No, no. Radishes (laughs) and cucumbers are the number one and number two vegetables that will make. Well, I don't even I think cucumber is actually listed as a fruit. Did no. you, yeah, it has Cuc- seeds. A cucumber is not it's a fruit. It's not a vegetable. Look it up. A cucumber am, has to be a fruit look it up. because it has a seed. I would, vir- I would venture to say that a cucumber is a fruit. Pep, I am not wrong when it comes to the matters of nature. The nature boy, Jeff. Am boy. I right there, Kono? Yeah. No. Yep. Yep. to Google. Don't ever question Big Jeezy. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hey. Everyone slow down. Everyone slow down. Let's not lose our minds here. Horticulture is my passion, Pep. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. Where did Kono get this information? Everywhere. Google. Google, everywhere. Well, Trust okay, me. so what did Google say? It says, by the, <laughs> it says, by this definition, a cucumber is a fruit. It's a fruit. It by develops what? from uh, the flower of the cucumber plant and contains the seeds. There you go. What's a, <laughs> hey, hey, what's a, okay, what do you consider a tomato? Uh, I think that is a fruit. Yes, it? it is a fruit. Is yeah, okay. yeah. I'm not a horticulturist Because like it has you. seeds? Because it, it has seeds, yes. Is that how you determine if it's a fruit? Yes, Pep. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm right. I'm telling you, I'm right. Hi, you can question me. Question all you like. So I, if it has I have seeds, a green thumb. So what do you call the big seed in a peach? Because it's not a seed. They call a pit. It, no, no, it's like a... They call it like a drone or something? Like, there's a special... Sti- it's still a fruit. There's a seed. You can still grow it off of that, my friend. You throw a peach I'm pit trying, in I'm the gonna, floor. I'm poke a hole you throw in your a theory. peach pit in that in the in the gravel or the dirt of the soil of the land, and you, my friend, will grow a tree. We're trying to do that. They kind of do. Bananas nope. do have seeds. Yes, they do. Yeah, they're kind of in the middle. Yeah, those are little seeds. brown things. Little to- yeah, those are seeds. Banana is a fruit, but but banana. I did, I did no, a peach no, pit. no, no, no. Banana is technically there's another term for it, and I'm going to come up. Look it up. I'm going to see if I can guess get this right. There's a, a legume. They're a legume. No, they are. Yeah, you know what a legume is? It's like those. Uh, I think they might be a legume. Like a pot of peas Don't, or something yeah, like that. A legume. It might be a part of the legume family. 
If I am right on there, then I, there is a genius. <laughs> I am a genius brewing right here. I just said the term legume that I pulled out of my butt. It sounds like you're making it up. Oh, I'm not getting around. I think it could be a banana could be a legume. But there are seeds, so maybe a fruit. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I just said legume. I love legumes. I'm going to try to poke a hole in that theory. I'm going to look up fruits that don't have seeds. Question, quiz me, my friend. Let's see. There are none. I guess an apple. Apple has seeds? And Johnny Appleseed, you I know. Come I on, Johnny. What are you doing? Don't think out loud. It makes you sound dumb. Apple, peach. Uh, yeah, mom, there mom. are some grapes that have seeds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Water, All grapes have seeds. Watermelons. All grapes. They say seedless grapes. Watermelons are, are they're not seedless. Even if they say they are. What? Okay, go ahead. Hold Because I don't know. A pumpkin? There's seeds, ding dong. I know, but is that a fruit? Yes, it's a fruit. That's a vegetable. No, it's not. It's a fruit. So is a squash. Is a pumpkin a, a fruit? A squash is a fruit. Yeah, you're wrong. I know these things. I've had arguments. Are you with, searching that code? Hey, out? I yeah. have. I have had arguments with scholars over this, and <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, have, I have. I'm telling you, the Wait. brightest minds have come together to discuss to discuss. Fruit no, with they, you. they, no, the brightest minds go together to discuss what is a fruit and a vegetable. They come to me for answers. <laughs> the oracle. Yeah, I. I is yeah. a pumpkin a fruit? Yes. yes it is. Don't question Who me. Is this guy? I'm telling you, I know things about oh, dumb yeah. stuff. I'm telling you, I know weird things, and I'm telling you, I can almost. It's a, it's a. You know what else I can do? I can balance anything on my nose and chin that is large. Were you a farmer in your past life? <laughs> that sounds awful. No, I just know it. It's just in my brain. I can balance. Seriously, if you give me a chair or a table, I can balance that sucker on my nose or my chin. Or a, or a big broom. I can balance anything on my nose and chin. It's a it's a skill that I don't know. I, I can pogo stick. I can juggle, and I can jump rope like none other. You're, Boom! You're the greatest Those showman. My, that's my speciality, right there. It's just I can. I'm a man of Why leisure. Not in the yeah. I, I can't move anymore, but I'm very very. I want to look up what a banana is. What's the technical name of a banana? I'm gonna have to say it might be a cross. A who? A cross bridge. It might be a legume. It might be. I think it's fruit, actually. What's you a, do a, a plantain? Is that a specific type of banana? That's a banana, too. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what to do with you. I just it says fruit. Yeah, it's a fruit. There's seeds in But I just <laughs> wanted to say the term legume. Legume. Might yeah. be a legume. Yeah. All right. The Inland Sports Show and all its wonders are brought to you by Boost Performance Training. In Corona with Coach Ray Bass. If you eat lots of fruit Legume. with seeds in it and train at Boost Performance <laughs> Training, you will reach your you will you will reach new heights at Boost Performance Training. Athletes of all levels and all sports, everyone's going to Boost. Check them out on Instagram and Twitter, BoostTrainingSystems.com. So, here's what we know: uh, a pumpkin's a fruit. Yeah. Manny Machado is now a member of the Dodgers. He has the worst hair in baseball. And Kawhi Leonard is now on the Toronto Raptors. He is not on the Toronto Raptors. He will be a Los Angeles Laker. But he is right now. Yeah, for the time being. But that could change. Oh, yeah. When we come back, more on Manny Machado, more on Kawhi Leonard, and we got some details on uh, the Little League guys are back. I know Kono's a big Little League guy. Not because he looks like one, but he he loves the Little League. (laughs) That was great. That was real good. You didn't even write that down or anything. Right. Right off the <laughs> right off the old noggin. We'll be back at your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. Is that our contest? God, first of all, I I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. 
we can do online stuff for your teams as well as like I said the screen printing the embroidery we also have three women that do extra sewing for us uh, like tackle tool on uniforms or uh, the bling or rhinestones for for different shirts for the ladies that's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for.
crazy day for local sports. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. We're brought to you by Spoiled, quick quality oil change. You can spoil yourself and your car when you get the oil change at Spoiled. Right there off of Alessandro Boulevard, off the 215 freeway between Riverside and Moreno Valley. So we spent a lot of time today, Jeff, talking about Kawhi Leonard. He's going to the Toronto Raptors. You think not for very long. The other big uh, news kind of started coming to a head yesterday. It's a done deal now. It's official. Manny Machado has been traded from the Orioles to the Dodgers. Mike Linskog will join us live in a matter of seconds, actually. Um, because, Jeff, there are several Rancho Cucamonga Quakes involved, Dodger prospects who are involved in this Manny Machado trade. We just got the names. We have not seen it officially from the Dodgers, but we're going with a a very credible source who covers baseball. All I know is I'm a little upset because I am more of a Quakes fan than I am a Manny Machado fan. And if if they don't win the World Series by bringing him in and they lose these guys that I have affectionately come to love in the Rancho Cucamonga Quake system, I will be a very angry man, Deb. You look very angry. I am angry because you you don't trade a guy that wears a suit with no shirt. But you know your fruit. I do know my fruit. You know your fruit. I know my fruit from my legumes, and I'm telling you what, I am a horticulturalist. A horticulturalist. Horta, horticulturalist. That's right. Yeah. So Manny Machado has been traded. It's a done deal. Remember they they were talking about there was a snag. Like one of the prospects that the Dodgers wanted to put in the in the trade maybe didn't pass a physical or there was an injury they were investigating. Um, but it's a done deal now. It is happening. Manny Machado will do- join the Dodgers as they hit the road after the All-Star break here, beginning in Milwaukee. But right now, let's go to the spoiled quick quality oil change. Celebrity hotline. Nobody knows the quakes like our dear, dear friend, Mike Linskog. He's the voice of Rancho Cucamonga right here on Fox Sports, i.e. 1350 AM. And Mike, um, you know, we haven't seen it officially from the Dodgers, the players in the trade. But Ken Rosenthal is reporting several of of the guys going in for, you know, in the Manny Machado trade. And they're Rancho Cucamonga quakes. What's that? Oh, gosh, is there something going on? Yeah. <laughs> I've been asleep over here at the office. Who's so Manny Machado? I, is, that, is that really what's been reported? Oh, I thought we were going to talk about Jeff or something. No, but I will say this. There were some seismic charges in the Quake Stadium today, just within the last few minutes. And the, my biggest concern was your safety first. And my second concern was I did not want them to trade Manny Machado for my boy, Mike Lin- Linscock. Uh, not for Linscock. <laughs> Chappy Chap, I don't mind because he's young and can handle it. But I don't know if you could live in, in Baltimore and call those games. No, no, that'd probably be impossible. And no, I was never uh, was never being considered to be traded, which uh, <laughs> which I think all parties are okay with. So, yeah, it is a really exciting time around here. So the the trade as it stands, that's that's being reported. Uh, and again, as as you alluded to, it has not been yet one hundred percent confirmed. You know, online to the general public by the Los Angeles Dodgers. So therefore, we are still in you know ninety nine percent. We'll call it speculation mode. But our sources tell us. Uh, that indeed the uh, the information coming out from Ken Rosenthal is uh, is accurate. Uh, if you are here down at the ballpark, and there are fans on on hand here that can uh, attest to this, Ryland Bannon was on hug watch. Uh, he was going around uh, doing doing some uh, some hugging with uh, with a handful of players and coaches and whatnot. So it is uh, by all for in, intents and purposes uh, going to become official very soon, I believe. And obviously, losing Ryland Bannon is a uh, is a huge blow for the Quakes. He leads the California League in home runs. Uh, he leads the California League in walks. His on-base percentage has been off the charts this year. And, uh, and he, frankly, he's uh, definitely one of the MVP candidates. He's probably one of two MVP candidates on this Rancho Ball Club. So it's, uh, it's obviously going to be a, a blow. I don't think it will be a death blow by any means uh, because only one of our current Quakes was involved in that trade. However, but uh, to add some validity to, uh, to what's going on down here in Rancho, four of the five guys that were going to Baltimore for Manny Machado, in my opinion, a top five Major League Baseball player, four of those five guys that are going to Baltimore have played in Rancho uh, over the last 365 days. We're talking with Mike Linskog, the voice of the Quakes here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. Mike, we saw this whole Manny Machado uh, trade possibility really gaining steam. Yesterday, it looked like it might even break during the All-Star game. It, it finally happened. Uh, 
this afternoon. And as we said, Ken Rosenthal throwing these names out there in the, the Machado trade. Uh, speaking of Ryland Bannon, I had a chance to see that guy a couple times um, in person. Fantastic bat. And great third baseman. In fact, he had a diving catch, I think, that we we threw on Twitter, and it got a lot of run, too. But with a guy that's so great, you know, what what does that do for the Quakes now in terms of finding an everyday third baseman, finding that big bat in the middle of the order? I mean, do you go to, like, low A and call somebody up? Does a guy who plays middle infield shift over to third base? I mean, where does that leave you guys, or is that something that, uh, you know, Sailor's going to have to figure out on the fly here? I would bet that our manager, Drew Saylor, would be quoted right now as to say, there's no way you're going to replace Ryland Bannon. However, in saying that, dot, 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 uh, we're going to have to have guys step up. Uh, today, specifically, the uh, the transaction that's going to be made official here uh, will be Ryland Bannon. Uh, his roster spot, obviously, will become occupied by Jaron Kendall, uh, who just came off the disabled list today. So, specifically, uh, move for move, that's, that's what the roster transaction is going to be. However, uh, you know, Kendall's not going to slide in as the, as the infielder. He's an outfielder. He's not going to slide in necessarily as the, 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 the cleanup hitter, you know, the guy to lead the team in home runs or anything like that. So the, the real answer is you're never going to replace Ryland Bannon, but, uh, you know, the style of ball that we play is, is going to have to change a little bit. Like I'm looking at the lineup right now, and Ryland Bannon, uh, believe it or not, although leading the league in, uh, in home runs with 20, uh, he's been hitting out of the two spot primarily this year. So in the two spot tonight is, uh, is Logan Landon. Uh, who's a guy that's got some power for sure, but uh, his his game is built around speed and defense more than it is around power per se. So uh, it's going to be a different uh, a different challenge, and, and we're going to take some more hits, I would assume. You know, the uh, the non waiver trade deadline. Uh, you know, there's there's two deadlines. There's the the July 31 deadline, and then the August 30th deadline. Uh, and we normally take some uh, some hits to that because uh, because the Dodgers are very active. I know they're going to be looking uh, to to secure some more pitching. I would assume as well. And so uh, our our team may change uh, yet. And uh, it's exciting times around here. But really cool to know that you know four out of the five guys that were traded were former Quakes that land Manny Machado. I mean that's just that's awesome. It's a real testament to what the Dodgers farm system is doing uh, that they go out and get a, a proverbial Hall of Famer with with our guys. And I Mike. Mike, I think in a kind of a bittersweet kind of way, you know, for for a guy like Ryland Bannon, who's having a great year for Rancho Cucamonga, you know, it's probably tough to leave this situation, and he probably enjoys his teammates and the Quakes and all that, but you got to think, hey, for the rest of his life, he'll be like, hey, I'm one of the guys that was traded for Manny Machado. That's how much um, interest the Baltimore Orioles had to have in Ryland Bannon, how much respect, how much upside and potential they, they find in this guy. I mean, he'll have that for the rest of his life, that he was the guy, one of the guys, traded for the great Manny Machado. Who knows, if the Dodgers go on to win the World Series with Manny Machado, you'll think, hey, it all worked out for the best, and maybe Ryland Bannon will you know, get his, uh, his shot in the big leagues eventually. But he'll always have that. He'll always be the guy that was part of that trade for Manny Machado. And I, I'm sure it's tough to leave, but the Orioles obviously wanted him in the deal. So that's got to feel, I would assume, kind of good on his end that he was wanted. I would assume so as well, and I, I hope that everything that you just said is true. I mean, you know, as we as we see, look at the DeMar DeRozan, uh, Kawhi Leonard thing today. I mean, DeRozan gets traded. You know, obviously San Antonio wanted him, but all he did on the way out the door was bash Toronto, and they lied to me. And obviously, I don't I don't know that situation here. I'm comparing apples to oranges, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I, I would hope that you know Ryland Bannon's going to look back at this and go, "Gosh, you know, that's so cool that Baltimore thought that highly of me that they parted with uh, Manny Machado uh, for for me as part of the big." package that uh, that is you know going back for you know like I said a potential hall of famer so I think it's a matter of you know glass is half full you know if you got a good attitude and a good head on your shoulders uh, and you realize that there's other teams out there that covet you and cover covet your skills uh, I think that that's uh, that's just uh, the better way to look at it because you know we, we obviously want him here the Dodgers want him and love him they drafted him high and, and assigned him to, to high a within his first full year as a professional and you know he's getting con- Consideration for the league MVP, and uh, now now he's on his way to Baltimore potentially, where uh, where he'll do some damage hopefully, and we'll see him in the American League in two or three years. All right, the Quakes back in action tonight against San Jose. Mike, what'd you do on your night off last night? There was no game. <laughs> I prepared for this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I have to run. We uh, we have home games uh, for the next six days though, so uh, hopefully we'll see everybody out at Lone Mart Field. Uh, my best to you, boys. Take care. Thanks, Mike. We Thanks, appreciate Mike. it. All right, that's great, Mike Linscog. He'll be on the air in uh, less than two hours here with the Quakes taking on San Jose. When we come back on the Inland Sports Show, guess what we're going to talk about? Oh, I don't know, Kawhi, Manny Machado. It's a big sports day. It's supposed to be the slowest sports day of the year. 
That got turned upside down. We'll talk more about Kawhi, Manny Machado. Hey, and Kono over here spent many a night out there at the Little League West Regional in San Bernardino. We're going to take a little stroll down memory lane with Kono. Yeah, but he was a bad guy. He was like probably lighting M80s in the toilets. Oh, and, he was that and, guy? And no. running around throwing seeds at everybody. Oh. Yeah, that's little Kono. Punk kid. I yeah. was the guy starting the wiffle ball game in the back. Yeah, he's I was that guy. guy. <laughs> we'll be back. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Doing. Coach Bass here with BPC. Wanted to share with you guys what we're doing today. So if you're a football player, lacrosse player, soccer, basketball, sport that requires backward movement, this drill's for you. Come check it out. So what the athletes are doing here, they're doing a back lateral run. So what I'm looking for here is I want their all right, they're gonna hit a lateral run, they're gonna hit a quick trend. It's a 90 degree foot cut. What I'm looking for is just a nice and fluid lateral run with their head looking back. They're going to dip that inside shoulder, make a nice, crisp and clean cut. They want to stay on a tight rope, and they want to accelerate out of it. So this drill here, it's very similar to the last drill that we just watched. Now we're hitting our lateral run, and we're going at a 135 degree angle. So we're just we're taking it up a notch, we're increasing that angle. So now we're still getting that single foot cut cut off the inside edge of our foot, and then we want to decelerate at the cone. So again, we want to make a nice and sharp transition. We want to dip that inside shoulder, we want to decelerate. So that's our boost training tip of the day. Thanks for checking us out again. And make sure you stay up to date with everything that's boost. Check our schedules, check our videos at our website at www.boosttrainingsystems.com. Check out our Twitter at boost underscore training and our Instagram at boost training. Grind hard, stay solid. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time.
He's got documentation. Play ball! We're back to the Inland Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pat Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Hey, I think I actually know this song. It's probably the first song I've known in a long, long time. Is this Oasis? What's that? The Wonderwall? You know why I know this song? You want to know why? I don't even know this song. Because I there was a, a video feature. Remember on the, the hockey goalie named Dominic Hasek? Yes. You remember the Dominator? Yes. They did a story. He was the wall. The Dominator. Dominic Hasek was known as the wall. And they put this song... With this whole like video montage they had on the Dominator, Dominic Hashik. That's how I know. Well, I don't, this was too. Nobody like, knows music like. See, this is kind of a downer music. I'm not gonna listen to this. No, I gotta listen to up, upbeat, old school rap, pop, you name it. I, Meek Mill. Do you have any Meek Mill on here? No, no one for Jeff. I don't want to listen to that crap. Greg or... Hall is going to look for Meek Mill just for you. And we're brought to you by Ken Sporting Goods. More than 40 years in the IE. Since 1976, to be exact, and the IE's never been the same because they got all the best sporting gear. Equipment, letterman's jackets, team sales as well. You got a whole team, that's fine. They can do a huge order. And they do it all right there in shop. They're the best. KinSportingGoods.com. That's Ken Sporting Goods off the 15 freeway in Norco. I got a little something for all you Raider fans out there. Are you listening, Greg? He's looking for Meek Mill, but I want him. I want to make sure he hears this. The Raiders have a new voice. You know, like Jeff and I, we are the voice of UC Riverside men's basketball. We call all the games. We're around the team. Is this Meek? This is Meek. this is your boy. But the Raiders have a new play-by-play man. Who they do? Oh, Greg Papa. Papa was around for a long time. I think like 30 years. Greg Papa's no longer on the broadcast? They kicked him off. They did? They gave him the boot. Oh, he was a big part of those broadcasts. Have you heard this, Greg? Is this news to you? This is news to me. Who do you think the Raiders replaced old Greg Papa? John with? Madden. Oh, close, though. Now you're, uh, you're going in the right direction. Cool. Howard Cosell. No, is he still with us? No. Is Madden's not with us either? No. You know who they replaced Pat Sajak. The great... Brent Musburger. Oh! He is 79 years young. I thought he retired. He's been around for forever. Like when they had like black and white film photography. Do you like want to he... hear a story? I have a Brent Musburger story for you. You do? I actually met Brent Musburger. Did, hey, did, bingo. Did you fight him? No, I didn't fight him. I actually, I was last time uh, Smitty Schmidt and I were in Vegas. We were in one oh, of the he hotels. lives in Vegas. Here's the deal. We were in a hotel. I can't remember which hotel. Maybe Kono, you can look this up. But he is a sports, uh, he sets the lines in yes, sports books. he's big on the sports bet. Yes, and he has, a, he has a daily radio show that he plays that it was, it, he was in the casino. Yes, he writes columns and does shows about sports betting in Vegas. You are absolutely right. He was in a glass box. And I was like, <laughs> like the Pope? Yeah, you can walk up and watch the show. And I remember I stood there and he came out and I shook hands with him. He shook hands with everybody. I'm not going to ask for an autograph of him. But I did notice that his hair Looked like a Brillo pad. Ooh. Oh, but he, yeah, he, I thought he was when dead. When was this? Eh, last year when I thought he was dead. Yeah. He was in the he was in the glass box. He was in the, but but he was like a museum. I wasn't sure if he was like <laughs> animatronic. Is that a wax figure uh, of Brent Musburger. Yeah, but he was moving <laughs> and stuff. I'm like maybe Disney's really done some wonders here. But <laughs> it's like it, Pirates of the Caribbean. What, what, uh, what hotel was that in? Uh, South Point Hotel. South Point. I was really drunk, so that tells you how I couldn't tell tell you which one. Yeah, he was, right. he was the hall. Is that of, guy real? The hall of presidents. I was like, hey, look at Brent. That's Musburger. the real Brent Musburger. Wow. Yeah, I thought he lived in the box. He had a, a nice couch in there, and a, it looked like a homey place. I thought that was maybe his apartment. But yeah, that's what he does. His sons uh, set the lines for uh, one of the big uh, uh, betting lines for Ve- for Vegas. Really? Yes. I didn't know he was so into it. Oh, he's a he's a legendary sports gambler. I mean, legendary. He's made more money gambling than he ever did, and he made a lot of money from his time. Did he do, didn't he do Monday Night Football for quite a while? he did, yeah. I think at one point he did. And he was the voice of the NBA on CBS? Oh, he's CBS. done so many like, college football you know, bowl games and all that nonsense. Wow, that's surprising. So now he is the voice of the Raiders. He's 79 years old. He's the voice of the Raiders now. It's a three-year deal. So it'll be because the Raiders have two more years in Oakland. And then 2020 is when they are expected to be in Las Vegas. So you would think uh, 82-year-old Brent Musburger 
would be in his third and final year of the contract when the Raiders play their first season in Las Vegas, which is his home because uh, now we found out he lives in a glass box in a casino. In the That's South where Point. he lives. Yes, he lives at the South Point. But, wow, that's really, really strange. That a guy... I just thought of all the guys out there, you know, for example, look at the Dodgers. They take a young up-and-comer like Joe Davis, right? And he's the voice of the Dodgers now. And Joe Davis, if you look back, could you imagine following in the footsteps of Ben Scully or Pep Fernandez? Ooh. Whoever's going to come in and fill the booth after you? That's oh. a tough thing. But, man, 20. Uh, 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 yeah, Joe Davis does a great job, and still pays patronage to Vin Scully, uh, has been a very good liaison. Is that a good word? Liaison between the two. Absolutely. You're Young absolutely and old. Correct. So, Raider fans, if you're a big fan, get ready for a new voice calling all the games. That's Brent Musburger, the legendary sports broadcaster. So, tomorrow, I think tomorrow, we're going to have a, a live update from the Little League West Regional. We always do it on the show. Uh, it's back. San Bernardino always hosts it. I say always, but at least, uh, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years, something yeah. like that. It goes back a long ways. So, the baseball, they have the West and Northwest Regionals. It's August 5th through 11th. They also do the softball regionals. They're going to have some ceremonial first pitches, including Zoe Castis from Aquinas High School. Just won the national championship with Florida State. She's going to be out there one of the days. In fact, July 22nd. But I bring it up today because we'll talk more about it tomorrow. But I bring it up today because Kono over here. Kono, did you ever did you ever make the All Stars? Did you ever have a team play in the in the West Regional? Um, not quite that far. Actually, Newmark Little League in San Bernardino has always been good. Always. And maybe my brother's team, two years older than me, they had like Zach Han or uh, Tommy Hansen was on that team. Oh, yeah. Tom, the the late, great Tommy Hansen. Yeah, yes. uh, Zach Zanicola was on that team. Oh, Zach? But they <laughs> went to divisionals. We well, played at ASU, their cousins, but they went to divisionals. <laughs> that was probably the closest. And we lost to Hank Conger and Cypress. Oh, Hank Conger. Yeah. Oh, now, now you're impressed. Okay, oh, yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. impressed. Well, but And Zach. I like Zach, too. Yeah, you so, should. So, um, but that's probably the closest. We just made, also, we never got that far. Just sectionals was like as far so as So even though you didn't make it to the regional, you would always spend your summers there, right? Yeah, you that's really out. the only thing as a kid to do on the north end of San Bernardino in the summer is to go to the West Regionals. And because they have Hawaiian ice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they do really good. Delicious. Work. So, at least go down there for that. <laughs> but were you part of the grounds crew? Um, Yeah, or at one point, I was part of the grounds crew. I was about 14 or 15, or maybe both. But, yeah, we just got to, I got to drive the little buggy. Yeah. And then you have to pull rake, out the rake. rake. The hey, and... Jeff. Hey, Jeff, have you ever done that? I have. Because it's, it's, so it's hard. I coach softball. I used to have to do it every day. I used to have to manicure my field. No, I was just, <laughs> I was just laughing because, you know, I was thinking of my Little League days and, the high point of my little league, you know, I was great. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, I was But great. no, I, <laughs> we used to take Fun Dip. You remember Fun Dip? Yes. yes. Yeah, you Love know. it. Still around, by the way. Uh, on a hot summer day when we'd be playing in the All-Stars and the Catholic Little League, we'd Catholic find this, we, we, yeah, we would, we'd find the sweatiest kid. And we <laughs> and we <laughs> dump and we dump it. <laughs> we would dump fun dip down his shirt. No, you did Yeah, and his back of his shirt would be either blue, red, or whatever. That, yeah. Oh yeah, that's all I was thinking about. And then big league chew. Remember that you jam? Loved it. Oh, and then you mix it in with your jerky. Did you ever do that? No. Oh, see, I was I was a pro. <laughs> I was. <You> sure <laughs> was. Oh, that's all I was thinking about was fun dip. So you'd find time. the sweatiest kid and throw the fun dip on. Yeah, you just pour so it down his back. and nasty all day. If you can, fun dip was so light. You know, you wouldn't if you if you did it slowly, the kid wouldn't know <laughs> that you'd pour it down his shirt. Or if you were really good, if his pants, if he was a. a you pour it down his butt crack. If you could see a crack, you know, if anybody saw a crack, you would just take that fun dip and you would just like pour he was it down. asking for it. Yeah, and then the kid would be like, in the middle of the third inning, he'd be like, he'd have gooey, gooey love, but his butt would be, he'd have a see a blue line right down the middle of his white pants. And of course, we were jerks and would laugh about it. But yeah, that's, that, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, I was thinking little league. But yeah, that's a great. Didn't you have a little league story about uh, uh, Fernando Valenzuela? I love hearing this one. No, I w no, I was a grown man when that happened. I know, but, but... wasn't he a jerk? But <laughs> 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 wasn't Fernando Valenzuela kind of a, a jackass to you? Uh, okay, so it's, he did. You know, I take it back. He did. Wait, were you talking about me when I played Little League? No, or? when you interviewed 
a what did he a jerk to you? Did you uh, want to punch him out? Listen, so okay, so he did <laughs> he did throw out the first pitch, I think, like a year or two ago, uh, in San Bernardino at the West Regional. Did he go eyes up and you know, he used, remember he used to have that he really brought some heat. Yeah. El Caliente. He, but he, no, no, no. What you're thinking of was when he was, he was. His kid was playing. He was watching his son in the minors. Yeah. And he was a real jerk. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. It was minor league. It wasn't the all-star game. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I but, said, soy de Mexico. And he said, he didn't care. <laughs> he didn't care. He, he was kind of brushed was, you off, didn't he? I, I got a little bit of an interview. It wasn't much, but I got a little bit. Was he, was he fat Fernando or skinny Fernando? No, he was fat Fernando at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in the stands, hot, <laughs> probably covered in fun dip. I don't know. And he was watching his son. I, you know what? Honestly, if, remember, if, for, if I ever saw, me. If, and you know me, if Fernando were to walk into this studio right now, I'd say, hey, you were a jerk to my best buddy. <laughs> I'd probably kick his ass. Stand right there. I, I, would probably, I got a pack of fun dip with your name all over I, it. Hey, turn around, buddy. I'm going to wedgie you, and I'm going to pour some fun dip straight down your butt crack because you were a jerk to Pep Fernando's. Yeah, he didn't like me. The other one was Pete Rose. Pete Rose? Like me. Oh, I have a Pete Rose story. Did you fight him? No. Was but, he in a glass box? No, but I got yelled at. I was he was he was signing autographs in Vegas. And Smetty Smet and I were walking by. I go, dude, she goes, that's Pete Rose. I said, Yeah, I know. Look at him. he's gambling or doing whatever. And he wasn't gambling, he was signing autographs. So of course I had the camera phone out and I walked by and tried to take a picture of him while he was sitting in there, and one of his handlers tried to yell at me. I said, You don't yell. You do not yell at me, young man. Never. So I took a picture anyways and ran away. <laughs> ran off. Yeah, but every time I go to Vegas, you can find a Pete Rose sighting. Would He's you, always signing on If you're a Pete Rose, wouldn't that be the last place you'd want to be seen? He lives in Vegas. Oh, he does? Yes. <laughs> Pete Rose, he's got a really hot wife, too. Have you ever seen her? Well, he had, um, I think it was Skechers. Didn't he have a Skechers commercial, a TV commercial with with uh, himself and his wife? He, he had a reality show, and the only reason I watched the reality show is because she was really good looking. Pete Rose, you know, he's got that helmet head. Yeah, he, he's not <laughs> aging well. No, he hasn't. he's always been a weird-looking cat, though. You remember when he played? He, he'd always have that big hair. He'd take off the helmet, and his helmet, it would, like, molded to the helmet. It was big, and it was always dry. He didn't sweat. The hardest working guy in baseball never sweated. He would not be good with fun dip. No. You'd, could, let, you'd waste the whole pack of fun dip on him. Be like, oh, man, he looks sweaty. But Fernando, though, he, I'm telling you. you oh, could, I bet you he's real sweaty. He'd wear that. Yeah, he'd he'd wear that he would have had that blue fun and that red fun dip all in his shirt. Yeah. I just can't believe I remembered those silly things. I think Yancey Dodson was part of that, too. The coach of Polly. I think dip crew. I think he used to pour uh, fun dip down, down people's cracks, too. Always. The fun dip. <laughs> the Fun Dip crew that poured Fun Dip down cracks. All right, we come back on the Inland Sports Show. We're going to defend Mike Trout. What, 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 what? We love Mike Trout. I love him like a brother. He doesn't have to change anything about himself. We love him just the way he is, and we're going to tell you why when we come back. It's the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Uh, Played uh, once upon a time at Centennial High School. I was actually on the uh, first ever CIF championship team uh, back in 2000, and then uh, my senior year we won it again. I'd say that's my passion because I've done it. You know, um, I know exactly where these athletes are at. I know what their mindset is right now. I know how hard it is to number one find a, a, a performance coach who can take you to the next level. What sets us apart has to be, you know, how we work with our athletes and what we know. We 
can take an athlete and get and you know help them reach their athletic potential, you know, help them, you know, prevent injuries, help get them stronger. I know every single athlete who steps into this gym, I know exactly where they're at, and I'm gonna progress them every week. If you're not getting results, then you know, would really what's it about? We're gonna deliver something that's measurable, you know, in terms of speed, power, you know, strength, agility. We're a small family owned, strive for quality pre-owned vehicles. We're not a volume dealer and we take every, every deal as personal to us. We're a low stress environment. We're not a pressure sales house. Um, if you want to shop us, you're more than welcome to shop us. We have, like I said, great rates, competitive financing, a lot of one owner, clean Carfax, clean title vehicles. As you see, we have Carfax everywhere. That's most important to us to educate our customers before they make a purchase. We're right off of Ontario, right off a couple exits off the 15 freeway, off Cahelco, off El Cerrito, and uh, we're right on the main drag going into Dos Logos and the crossings. We have great financing, we have great lenders that we're using, we do buy, sell, trade, cash for your car, whatever we need to do to help uh, accommodate the customer, that's what we're here for. We have a little bit of everything. We start at about $69.95 and go all the way up to $100,000. We have Escalades, we have commuters, we have pickup trucks, we have Jeeps, sport utilities, and if we don't have it, our specialty is finding you exactly what you're looking for.
Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Happy National Hot Dog Day to everybody out there. Oh, man. That was the big news. I mean, there's the Manny Machado thing to the Dodgers and Kawhi to the Toronto Raptors, but it's also National Hot Dog Day. Let's not lose sight of this. Dude, Joey Chestnut, uh, just remember this date. July 4th, 2019, Coney Island, the Big Jeezy is going to take your throne. I'm telling you, I could beat him in a heartbeat. I'm going to take it. I'd love to get him on the show, actually. Wouldn't that be fun? Hey, he was on one of my favorite TV shows. Joey Chestnut? Old Joey Chestnut. He was on The Amazing Race and did pretty well until he had to run. Then I think his heart almost stopped, though. That kind of hurt his Amazing Race. Really? He looks athletic. He looks built. It was less amazing when he had to run. But it was a great show. And Joey Chestnut, a very, very nice man. But his reign is going to be over next year. Well, if you would like to run faster, Joey Chestnut could always... Go to Boost Performance Training in Corona with Coach Ray Bass. He'd have Joey Chestnut run in circles around everyone while eating donuts and hot wings and hot dogs at the same time. Could he expect? Do you think uh, Coach Ray Bass could expand his stomach muscles? Coach Ray Bass can do anything. He's like Superman. He is like Superman. So whatever you go in there for, he's going to be making you faster and stronger and jump higher and probably not eat more. But if that's what you go for, I think you can. Or maybe I don't know. BoostTrainingSystems.com is the website. Go check it out for yourself. doesn't matter what sport you play because they can train you up in all the different sports, all the different levels. Follow them on Instagram and Twitter, Boost Performance Training. All right, so Mike Trout. Here's the deal on Mike Trout. So He's wonderful? He is wonderful. We love Mike Trout. We love him just the way he is. Not everybody does. What? And I should, I should hazard this by saying Rob Manfred, the uh, commissioner for Major League Baseball, I wouldn't say he threw Mike Trout under the bus. This is probably unfair to say that. But he just basically said, hey, a lot of baseball stars, like any professional athlete, they have to make a decision. Do they want to be always in the public eye, whether it's, you know, endorsements, marketing material? They're already playing their sports, so they're going to be everywhere, right? Right. On TV, internet, uh, accessible through social media. But Mike Trout has decided... To pull back on a lot of those things. He doesn't do a lot of endorsements. I saw some people on, you know, Twitter said, oh, he does Nike and he does, uh, is it is it body armor? Is that his, uh, yeah, his power drink? Things. Like, so he does have endorsements. So don't say he doesn't do anything. He does do some things. But he doesn't exactly just put himself out there. When Mike Trout's in the offseason, he's deep in the offseason. We don't hear from him. He's not, you know, always seeking the limelight. He's not causing controversies on show- social media because he's posting crazy tweets. He's just not that guy. He doesn't market himself. He likes to lay low, and I appreciate that. Mike, I do the same thing. Mike Trout and I are like the same guy. Yeah, you're you're really not. We're like the same uh, guy. Hey, you know, he's he's a solid character guy. We've always talked about this. Some guys just don't need the limelight. I mean, just think of it this way. Up until a couple years ago, until he got married, he was living in his parents' basement in New Jersey. He's not your typical superstar. No, and and you know what? He's probably going to command... If if Bryce Harper's going to command three to four hundred million dollars, what are you going to give Mike Trout? Mike Trout's the best to ever play the game thus far. A lot can change within, but has any? There hasn't been a guy, player, man alive that has played the game of baseball better than Mike Trout and represented himself better than Mike Trout. He, they're going to have to give him like a, a share of Disneyland or something crazy. Although they, they don't own Disney, but they need to give him something crazy in Orange County to keep him around because Mike Trout is that good. In fact, let me read the statement real quick. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's too long from Rob Manfred. And then we have the rebuttal. Actually, the Angels had a rebuttal to this today. Yes, they had a they press did. release defending their guy, Mike Trout. But the commissioner, uh, Rob Manfred, here's, here's the first sentence in his statement. Quote, Mike's a great guy, great player, really nice person. But he's made certain decisions about what he wants to do and when he wants to do it and how he wants to spend his free time and how he doesn't want to spend his free time. So basically he's saying, hey, listen, is Mike Trout the nicest guy in the world and the best baseball player? Yeah, but he doesn't want to be, you know, in front of the camera all the time, pushing different products on commercials. It's just not his thing. And that's okay. And then the Angels came out, right, Jeff? And yeah. had a rebuttal of this today. Would you like me to read the entire rebuttal or just parts of it? Just parts of okay. it. Okay. 
Uh, I'll start from this part. Mike Trout is an exceptional ambassador for the game. Combined with his talent, his solid character, he creates a perfect role model for young people everywhere. Each year, Mike devotes a tremendous amount of his time and effort contributing to our organization, Marketing Major League Baseball. He continually chooses to participate in the community, visiting hospitals, schools, and countless other charities. They they go on to say other blah, blah, blah. His brand is built upon generously spending his time engaging with fans both at home and on the road. And in conclusion, it says, Mike spends quality time as a husband, son, brother, uncle, and friend. We applaud him for prioritizing his personal values over commercial self-promotion. That is a rare in today's society and stands out as much as this extraordinary talent. I get that. I appreciate everything that the Angels said. I totally get that. I'm on board, and I understand why. So, And they pointed out, he does a lot for charity. He loves the fans. He's all, always engaging the fans. You're just not going to see him on every single commercial or ads on Twitter. I mean... You know what? The guy, the athlete that comes to mind right now who's everywhere and I can't I can't escape him, Shaq. Shaq is like on every He's single TV the, commercial. Have you noticed that? He does the, the his, balm. The, the balm you rub on yourself. His back hurts. He's got a new car. Got He's new got insurance. the floor. Yeah, the general. The like general. It, He's everywhere. Yeah, and, and guys, you know, thrive on that. But there's guys like Mike Trout. And, and I saw a picture last night, Pep, and I, I hope you saw it. It was a, a selfie, and I hate to use the term selfie, but Mike Trout took it in the right right angle so you couldn't see his jowls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was Mike Trout. Um, was it Mike Judge and... I think it was Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. And, Mike Judge. That's right. I was and uh, Mookie Betts, Mookie right? Mookie Betts. All three of those guys. And watch, looking at that picture, I felt that that was where uh, MLB baseball is. You can say the Dodgers are a national brand, a world brand, but I kind of felt... In the same sense that the Angels, because of Mike Trout, was a world national brand. Because you had a, a Boston Red Sox, a New York Yankee, and a an American League. Uh, and a, a West Coast, a West right? Coast like team. Southern California. The, the Los Angeles Angels. And I felt it was a, I didn't think it was anything out of place. It just seemed like those were the three spokesmen. And you couldn't ask for three better guys right now in Major League Baseball. Well, they even asked uh, Bryce Trout, uh, I'm sorry, Bryce Harper, do you think Mike Trout is the best player uh, in all of baseball? And he, I, I forget what his I exact have the quote, quote was, but he said, like, uh, you know, basically saying, if you don't think Mike Trout is, you're not watching the game of baseball. That's exactly what he said. If you don't, if you don't, then you're not watching. That's Bryce Harper and whether he considers Mike Trout to be the best baseball player. So what? You don't turn on the TV and see him in every single commercial. He does do some endorsements. He does a lot with charity. The fans love him. Don't change Mike Trout. Keep being Mike Trout. P keep being selective. You're not selling yourself out. He prioritizes his personal values uh, over basically com commercial you know, you know self-promotion. a lot of endorsements? Kobe. What? Yeah, he did. Turkish Airlines. Hey, cars, but those weren't here, though. What? Hey, you know, he used to do uh, Nutella. That's how I got yeah. really... Oh, yeah, see? See, Nutella, all I, kinds of stuff. Nutella. I'm just jealous. I'd, I'd peddle Nutella right now. Dude, if, if somebody came in here and said, you need to, so, I would love for you to be the spokesman for bros or or um, the man's ear. You know, we're Seinfeld guys. I'd say, sure, I'll size, size me up. Size me up. <laughs> and, you know, if you're going to pay me, I'll do ba basically I'll take anything. one in every color. Let's bring it on. When we come back, we're going to wrap up the Inland Sports Show. we got a couple minutes at the end to get you all set for Quakes Baseball. Here on the Fox Sports IE 1350 AM flagship, the Inland Sports Show. We'll be right back.
Fernandez Sports Show. Here are your hosts, Pep Fernandez and Jeff Gorham. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE 1350 AM. We are just about done and in about oh, less than an hour. Rancho Cucamonga Baseball is back after a rare night off. They are taking on the San Jose Giants. That's what they're called? Sure. I haven't heard of the San Jose Giants. I always hear like all these funny names. Same like, colors. Uh, the hat's a little bit different. SJ, but yeah. Oh. Same, same guys. Same dudes. We're brought to you by Catalano Motors in Corona off of Temesco Canyon Road. You can buy, you can trade, you can finance. So they make it easy for you. And now the Inland Sports Show is helping you out. $500 off at Catalano Motors when you mention the Inland Sports Show. CatalanoCars.com is the website. Catalano Motors. Check them out. Off Temesco Canyon Road in Corona. So tomorrow, guess what we're going to talk about? Uh, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. So here's the deal. So... There's rumors now, there's speculation, like what if Kawhi, who does not want to play for the Toronto Raptors, what if he never just shows up? Like, what, Does Uh-oh. he have to show up? Does he have to play for them? Can he hold out? What if he went and played overseas? That's another thing. Oh, that's a good question, Jeff, because uh, I was digging real deep here. Were you? There's big-time consequences if he does not show up, if he does not, A, report to the Toronto Raptors, and B, if he does not play. If he sits out more than 30 days... Lots of fines, and the Toronto Raptors, maybe more importantly, would not have to give up his rights as when he becomes a free agent. Very strange stuff, like hidden in the uh, NBA rule book when it comes to this stuff. Well, we'll have to go over this first thing tomorrow because I'm curious now, and I want to hear. Unless he's story. a Laker by tomorrow, and then this all goes out the window, Jeff. I, I honestly think something will be done here very quickly because unless he Kawhi Leonard comes out and speaks, there is going to be some kind of movement. The waters are still moving. All right, so more Kawhi Leonard talk, and uh, you know he is now a member of the Toronto Raptors. Will he actually play? Does he want to be there? Does Toronto want to turn him around, kind of like an episode of Flip This House? Are they just bringing him in, trade him off to the Lakers? We'll talk more about that. And Manny Machado, now officially a Dodger. Big trade today involving a current Rancho Cucamonga Quake, Rylan Bannon. Hopefully, we'll see Machado maybe in the, in the Dodgers lineup tomorrow in Milwaukee. We'll have to find out. We'll see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock. It's been your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show on Fox Sports IE, 1350 AM. Bye.